That's it. It's Saturday night. Saturday night live stream. Get it off your chest. The show where you can come on the live panel. Talk to us about whatever you want to talk about. I see English with Mr. Finn. Mr. Finn, I sent you the link um, on Instagram. So if you want to jump on, you're welcome. I know our two regulars, our other two regulars, Gonzo and Man, will jump in here shortly. But um, we've got a awesome panel to start. We have Marty Nutshots and Frank Pesci. Why don't you guys- Frank Pesci here. You guys can find me on Instagram at Frank underscore Pesci underscore, just like you see it on the screen. You can also check me out on YouTube. Just check me out, Frank Pesci, and you'll see my avatar right there. You'll know it's mine. I do appreciate your uh, your engagement. Awesome. Well, one thing I'm going to do tonight early, and that's going to put the live link in the chat. So we're going to start out early tonight with anybody who would like to come on and join the live panel. Um, since it is Get It Off Your Chest Saturday night, there it is. And I'm gonna pin that to the top when it pops up on my YouTube here. So that's where we're at tonight. Anyways, guys, I think the um, my get it off your chest topic for the night tonight is gurus, idols, content creators. How do we discern who we follow and who we take our information from? 30 years ago, 25 years ago, you couldn't jump on YouTube to learn how to fix the brakes on your car, learn how to change your drive belt on your dryer, or learn how to interact with women, learn about the manosphere. So I'm going to go to Frank first on this. How does somebody discern who they follow, why they follow them? And probably most important, discerning if their information is correct or good for them. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think the first place we got to look is, is within ourselves, right? Because we're all consuming content from somewhere, whether it's for a purpose because we're trying to learn a new skill or develop a project or develop an idea, what we do is we seek out people who we consider to be experts on those matters and we glean from them what we can because it's very hard to be in a position where you're reinventing the wheel, right? You want to be able to stand on the shoulders of some of the work that other people have done to give yourself a leg up, save yourself some time. I think when it comes down to uh, you know, self-improvement or dating or, or these types of subjects, I think people are going to try to identify with the people they want to become. So, you know, if somebody is a terrible dresser, for instance, they're going to go out there and look for somebody who they consider to have great style. And they're going to see what they can take from that person because they believe that they can attain or visualize the same thing that that guru or uh, influencer is presenting. I think now we live in a time because of multimedia, because of social media, people are able to present themselves in the best light using these tools. So a lot of times you will see, uh, you know, some of these big influencers on Instagram and different places, they have all these tools at their disposal to paint themselves in the best light. And they're able to convey their message through a very targeted approach and attract an audience. And when they attract an audience, they're able to monetize that. Uh, so I would say in terms of discernment, how do you discern who you should follow? Uh, well, you have to consider what is your, what is your desired outcome and when you can, you can figure what your desired outcome is or where it is that you want to be, then you can identify some people who along the way will help you get there. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, right? When we were, when we were young kids, we all had a favorite athlete. We all had a favorite singer. We all had somebody that we looked up to that we thought we could become like them in due time. Once you become a man and you become an adult, uh, you know, you kind of figure out who you are, what your strengths are, what you need to, to, to become and so on and so forth. So I think, you know, it's, it's all in the process of maturing. I think it's really important that you don't make anybody an idol, right? First and foremost, if you make somebody an idol, uh, then you're really losing, uh, you're really losing sight of what it is that you are becoming, right? Because you are made specifically for a purpose. You are made specifically uh, to bring a solution. You are made specifically in the image of God. 
Uh, so to make another man or another person or another woman or whatever an idol, you're doing yourself a great disservice and you're, and you're doing God a disservice. You should strive to be the best version of who you can be. Uh, be a better version of yourself tomorrow than where you were yesterday. These kinds of mentalities uh, you know, should, should help you form discernment when it comes to approaching uh, the influencer angle, as it were. Um, but but at the end of the day, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to attain knowledge. You know, for generations, we have done it through books. We've done it through, uh, you know, spending time with other people that we look up to, mentors and things like this. But I think that we should be careful and vigilant about who we allow to influence us. I'll give you a brief example, and then I'll shut up and pass it on. Uh, I had a mentor early on in life, um, and this mentor told me, he said, I have a piece of paper in my hand. And he said, Frank, who taught you how to, how to cook? And I said, oh, my, my dad. He ripped off a piece of the paper. He said, well, who taught you how to dance? And, and ripped off a piece of paper and threw it away. Who taught you how to do this? And who taught you how to ride a bike? And who taught you this? Who taught you how to use tools? And by the time it was all done, there was just one little tiny piece of paper left. And he said to me, Frank, this is you. Everything else in your life was influenced by somebody else. But this little piece of paper is you. So we're constantly learning things from people. And it's important that... Uh, we make sure that the people that are speaking into our lives are the right people uh, or else later on we're going to find out that we've uh, produced some bad fruit because we let some bad people in. So that's my two cents on that. Okay. And well, that dude, that's a great take. I, I love it. I think when we talk about discernment too, I think what, what happens is a lot, a lot of people, whether it's a man or a woman is looking for an answer. I, I think what my issue is, is, Again, how does somebody discern if that's the right answer? You got to be careful with people that you follow, okay? Again, to me, I have nothing wrong. I don't see anything wrong with somebody making a buck, okay? But I don't want a snake oil salesman. That's what I don't want. If I'm going to purchase something, I want value for my money. Um, to me, a lot of things in the Manosphere area, I'll go back to that real quick, but I think when a message is watered down for the sake of dollars, to me, that's wrong. If you start something and you have a, I, I, let's put it this way. I think money can influence people to change their message because of the dollar signs. Sellouts. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really, really what that is, you know? So, um, so let's welcome Mr. Finn. What do you think about that question? I didn't, so. I didn't really catch the question because I came in when Frank was going, going on and I, I just was not in my head because I'm sorry if you can't hear me. I agree with a lot of, a lot of what he was saying. It's, it's, it's uh, really true. And nowadays we're oversaturated with just information coming from all, all over the place. And, um, what a lot of people neglect to realize is, um, most all of us, if not all of us, take in new information with our own presuppositions. You know, we filter in new information with the beliefs that we already have. And um, so to discern what is what is valuable, what is good, it's going to take for a lot of people to have already some kind of wisdom or experience to be able to to see that. And, and at the same time, something can look good for, a, you know, at first. And for a while, uh, this happened to me when I started waking up in 2016, I, I, I saw, I don't know if you guys saw the Gothard tunnel opening ceremony, uh, in 2016, that was, that was what woke me up to a lot was going on. It was this weird pagan ritual. It was bizarre. And that led me down a rabbit hole. And I started waking up to a lot of stuff. And, and after a while, some of the stuff I was noticing was all like clickbait and just for, just for the audience, just for the views, and not nothing, not, not much of substance, um, because I mean I don't know how I how I came to it. It's just so, things just weren't like the dots weren't connecting, you know. The dots, some things weren't weren't connecting with me, and I've been I've been lucky enough that I've I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life. I've lived, I've moved around in many different cities and and two countries, and I don't know. You, I think. I think with life and these, and when you, the more experiences you have, you start to have these these feelers that you can't really, I don't know, identify. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, don't know. I didn't get the question though. Well, the, the question, question is, 
is nowadays a lot of people with social media, with YouTube, you have your idols, you have your yeah. your content creators, your right. gurus. Right. How do you discern that guru? How do you discern like just because a guy wrote a book, just because a guy tells you this is how you make money? Um, a lot of it is send me money and I'll tell you how to make money. That kind sure. Of um, so how do you discern what's right, what's wrong? How does a guy say, okay? In other words, like me growing up, there was no YouTube. There was no, no if I wanted to change my car, we were talking about that, I think off backstage about like the Chilton's manual. I know? think we're still, I think we're still backstage. I don't think we're alive yet. Yeah, we're live. Are we? I don't think so. Oh no, we're live. Dude, we're live. Okay. Are we? All right. Yeah. Uh, no, so yeah, how do how do we figure that out? Because I didn't have YouTube either growing up. I mean, my role model when I was a kid was MacGyver. I loved MacGyver. Do you guys know MacGyver? Yeah. Like she could oh, fix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was my role model, man. I remember awesome. when I used. He, yeah, I remember when I you know when I used to work in electrical and I used to run into a problem. I would think, okay, what would MacGyver do? How would MacGyver fix this? But, but I'm talking about somebody who like influences you, who influences you. Yeah. Now it's not people are looking for information. That's why you're coming on YouTube. You're looking for information. Yeah. You're looking Enter entertainment for, or information, both. But right. a lot of it is advice. I mean, YouTube is a lot of advice. It's a yes. lot. Of, it's a lot of gurus, a lot of idols, a lot of people to follow that want. They want followers. They want a lot of people are giving you information. Again, I don't think that anybody should. Um, I have no issue with anybody making a buck. That's not the issue. The issue is, is how do you discern who to follow? In other Receipts. words, seats. Uh, receipts, oh. background. Uh, I mean, what a, I, I, most people, most people who are online, I think right now, um, you sh they should have a, they should have a background. Like you should be able to, you should be able to see some background from where they come from, <laughs> to to see if what they're saying matches how they live. You know, I mean, as for myself, as for myself, like words are wind you know words you know you, you could talk a lot of game but i want to see like how you live your life like what it is that you do and if it reflects what you say then okay i may i may listen to you i may i may pay attention because you don't just talk the talk but you are walking the walk and i, I think personally that that's a big thing okay we, well we live in a we also live in an anonymous youtube yeah. Nobody wants a lot of people don't want to give their names. OK, and we, we understand that, you know, we live in cancel culture. Um, I think a lot of people fall under the umbrella of I don't want to give my name because I'm giving you information that could damage my life. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't want to give you I can't give you too much information about myself. So just believe what I say. Well, yeah, there's a lot ahead, of that. Mark. There's Sandman. There's you know he's very popular with the MGTOW. I'm gonna go back to what you originally said. When I first started going into YouTube, it was during my divorce. I was very depressed, and I was like, I can't be the only guy getting divorce rate, right? I literally looked up on YouTube divorce rate, and I found Rich Cooper and Rollo. And I thought they were good at first. I thought they were solid, and and I found out I had to buy a book from them. Okay, I bought Rational Mail, followed him, and he was kind of talking down with, but there was a lot of things I didn't agree with them. And I couldn't tell. And then all of a sudden it was $2,000 an hour. If you want to become a man, you need to quote. And that steered me away. That was like, this guy's not legit. He's not really trying to help us. He's training an image. I felt he wasn't being very transparent about how his life truly was. Then I... Then I bumped into Coach Adams, Googling on you, Googling, researching on YouTube. And, you know, all he ever asked for was a book. You know, I, I don't super chat. God, you guys don't either. Um, but, you know, it's hard to figure out who's fake because you don't know how many of them are secretly married, how many of them are secret pedophiles, how many are secret whatever they claim they are. And I'm not saying anyone is. I'm just using... You don't know what someone is truly like behind what they say. When we grew up, uh, there was a lot of these people that were frauds. Um, I remember there used to be shows like Geraldo would out them all the time. Yeah. Uh, 
everyone had all these gurus and today is basically keep your head up and unless you're 100 percent sure about someone don't spend a dime maybe pay five dollars for a book like everyone says make Todd dictionary it's 11 bucks not a big deal don't go out and spend five hundred dollars eight hundred thousand unless you're 100 percent sure there's no need for it also number one thing about gurus they're giving you advice that goes against your core beliefs you know, the, the beliefs that you truly believe in don't let them undermine you don't let them talk down to you and tell them you're less of a man because you you know you believe in god or you believe in treating women fairly you know, stick to your core if a guru is telling you to do something that's against your core don't listen to them you know? you don't need to be reprogrammed Everyone needs to be a good human being first and then work on themselves. That's just my belief. Um, let me let me jump in. Let me run in the chat here and take a look. I just want to welcome a lot of people. Uh, we got Matt M. We got Peg Bell. Emmanuel Godson, of course. Vivian is in the chat. We've got uh, we got Peekaboo, Vigo, uh, a lot of names I recognize. And I do have the StreamYard, the StreamYard, link is pinned at the top of the chat so it is get it off your chest saturday night the show where you can come on talk to, to us about anything almost anything and get it off your chest i'll kind of moderate what i don't want to say what you can talk about but there's certain things that um i would have to moderate um of course any just any shenanigans let's just put it that way we're not going to help you bury a body that you have in your. Yeah, you are you are welcome to uh, to click that link and tonight, unless I know you or I recognize you, if you have an avatar, you are not coming on. I'll tell you that right now. If you want to show your face, that's great. We do have some people we know that have avatars that are genuine that have been on the show. I have no issue with that. But anybody tonight, you're going to have to show your face. Um, because we do have a few trolls every now and then, which is uh, which is okay. Um, I got trolled today. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, comments or the post I put in uh, on Instagram. Was that, was that the Tony? The Tony? Tony uh, Lee Peterson. Tony Lee Peterson. Yeah, I saw that. Put my image and Jesse's image together and created a YouTube channel and calls it Tony Lee Peterson. So I'm gonna I'm gonna amend that troll, whoever it is. Got twelve thousand subscribers. Uh, yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> to start a channel and uh, and to spend the time to make an avatar, but uh, I will take that as a compliment. If you're out there, Tony Lee Peterson, good job, buddy, or whoever you are. I don't know who you could be. You could only be a man or a woman. That I know. So. <laughs> are you sure? Right. Well, I'm pretty sure about it. So uh, I thought I'm, you and Je I thought you and Jesse Lee were collaborating on something new there. I was like, "Well, what's that?" And Anthony from Mascadena's calling is uh, chimed in already. Yeah, I want to. Um, normally, Anthony is from Pasadena. Now he's from Mascadena. Um, so I'm going to welcome him tonight. Unmute him. So, Anthony, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I moved. I realized the errors of my way, and I moved to the uh, the masked area of my neighborhood. So, there you are. Well, do you have any? Do you have any um, to my get it off your chest question or comment of the night? Which is, how do you discern from a your idol, your guru, your content creator? How do you discern that person? Yeah, you know, it, uh, a lot of people get uh, get fooled uh, into their gurus. Uh, I got uh, so Frank Pesci is is got a good, you know, a good uh, a lot of good advice about uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, but just for example, I I back in the I want to say the the late nineties, I got into uh, involved in a guy who was run out of Seattle. He, he was doing like day trading kind of stuff. I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't remember his name. I have some of his books. I actually went to the seminar. I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember his name, but, but we can all get fooled in, into this. It, no, was I wasn't it, fooled, so. Anthony, was it Jordan Belfort? Was that his name? No, no, no. It wasn't Jordan Belfort. No. <laughs> no, no. 
But anyway, uh, but um, but I've always been involved in, in you know, since uh, for a long time in in investing. Um, but I did, fall, you know, you, you know, you read things and whatever, and so it's not it's not uncommon to get to get uh, hooked into these guys, and it's not a, it's it's no shame, but you, but you continue, you don't stop learning, you keep learning, you know, and if they don't work, you move on. You know, you just keep moving on, you know, and that's it, because you can't be a because sometimes what what uh, even false uh, gurus or whatever people just trying to like is it, sometimes they have real information, but you have to be discerning. You have to keep you have to keep learning. Right. I mean, it's a very important. You know, so you have to keep learning. So even you your know, guru, you know, one one thing that that Mr. Finn um really brought up was receipts. And I think that's a great, that's a great take on it. In other words, how can somebody, how can a content creator or a guru show their receipts rather than just giving you information? In other words, um, I know um, John San, Sanmez, Bulldog Mindset, he actually, I think he might be on his Patreon, but he actually shows his like income of what he makes when he helps guys make money. So I think that's really important. He's showing his receipts. And I'm not sure, Mr. Finn, I think in the fraternity of excellence that you're in, don't guys have to show receipts for certain things? Yeah, well, if you if you claim to be working on something, if you if you go in there because uh, it, where we where we interact, there are different channels in that we engage on you know, different areas of life, whether we want to help others because we have knowledge on it or there are areas we want to work on. And we, to be in, like in this fraternity, you, you're pretty clear on, on what your goals are, what your ambitions are, what you're working on, what your troubles are on. And they hold you accountable. We, we have Zoom meetings all the time, you know, uh, depending on the night or the day. And uh, they'll call you on it. So how's this going? So what's up with that? What did you do? So that so they they call you on it. It's not it's not a place just to hang out, you know, like like a, a digital or a virtual uh, 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 you know clubhouse. You know, it's not like a, a Facebook or whatever. We're just chilling and sharing and stuff. No, it's actually each one there, each one of us there is 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 trying to help each other just to make sure we're all. It's like to make sure we're all sharp and 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 ready in, in each area. So yeah. Uh, so they hold you to it. Whatever you're working on, they they will check up on you. So how's this going? What are you doing? You know, and they want you to show. They want you to show for it. Now I did a video a while ago. It was just while I was driving in the car, and it, and it kind of rings a bell now because what I said was, a lot of times when something that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's actually something that's truth. In other words, a lot of times truth makes people feel uncomfortable, and you tend to back away. So a lot of times I think when you do get that uncomfortable feeling, that unsettling feeling sometimes, it's because maybe now you are getting some truth from this person that you're listening to. So, but let me, let me, let me welcome Gonzo. Gonzo, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. 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 To be here. Um, did you get our get it off your chest topic, my topic for the night so far? I I missed the very beginning. So yeah, it's it's just about like um, your gurus, your idols, people you follow on YouTube. How do you discern who you follow? How do you know if that person is telling you correct information? I mean, there's so many different things that you can go on, whether it be mm -hmm. politics, whether it be religion, whether it be manosphere things. As far as you know, when it comes to um, you know dating relationships, um, you know pick up. How do you discern who's telling you what's right, what's wrong? Yeah, no, that's a really good uh, that's a really good thing to dive into because actually, you know, recently I was thinking about this. This is kind of I've only ever bought one course in my life, and um, the course that I bought uh, it was a it was a course from this guy who was talking about micronutrients and actually specifically he was talking about healing from Crohn's colitis gut diseases and at the time I had just gotten off being vegan I just started doing carnivore and um, 
this was the first guy I had ever seen. He was talking about inflammatory bowel disease and colitis and stuff. And this guy was like, I had all this stuff. It was really terrible. I had like fistulas. I had, it was like bleeding. It was just really, really nasty, terrible condition. And this guy said, now I can eat whatever I want. I don't have to worry. You know, I've gotten rid of it. I have cured it. And, you know, they, they say that you can't cure it. They say you can't get rid of this stuff, but you can. And I was blown away. I was, like, fascinated. And I really, like, uh, I really held on to my, my money for a long time because I was skeptical. And finally, I ended up uh, I ended up getting the course. And, I mean, it wasn't that much in the, in the grand scheme of things as far as courses go, right? But this stuff was in, was incredibly valuable. It was incredibly valuable talking about not just like the health of your gut, but like just your overall health. And um, it, it led me down just a really deep rabbit hole. And I realized just how undernourished people are, like seriously, big time. But where this uh, where this gets to the the guru thing and the receipts thing, because that's an important thing, is the uh, this guy recently got rid of all of that on his course. It blew my mind. I was shocked. I was like, what? This guy just, it seemed like he almost went back on everything he had said. And I knew that it was correct because, you know, I, I recovered largely from like, all this stuff that had been bothering me so long because I was, you know, diving into these rabbit holes. I know that, you know, nutrition is the way to, way to go. But this guy recently just came out and said, he is like, you know, he restructured his whole course. He got rid of most of the information that he had put out there and shared. And he said, it's all about German new medicine. So you guys, I'm not sure if you guys know what German new medicine is. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> German new medicine. It's like this. I it, basically, I'm going to just to explain it simply. You can look into it yourself, but it's this idea that like cancer and other health conditions are caused by mental issues. They're caused, it's caused by uh, like a, a stressful event or a conflict that happens. And this conflict causes a, an actual lesion that's vis visible in your brain. And uh, you, can, you can find it on a scan. And that the place, that part of the brain corresponds with the organ that is affected by the condition. And so the idea is if you resolve the conflict that you have, then you're going to resolve your health condition. And honestly, what this seems like to me is, a, a, it's, I, I wouldn't even call it pseudoscience. It seems like a religion. Yeah. It's like a religion. And um, he's now I mean, got everybody following that. It's crazy. Well, somebody, you know, it, it almost sounds, when you bring up something like in like the brain, or it reminds me of almost like Asian medicine or Chinese medicine where, if you have something wrong with your elbow, they're going to rub a certain part of your foot. I mean, you've heard that kind of stuff, right? You know, or if you have, um, you know, like I said, say, say you have a pain in your gut. Well, they're going to tickle this part of your foot or adjust. So it's kind of that whole, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of the whole Asian medicine thing. So, and Tony, can you put up Danger Russ's comment about the fake profiles? I want to. Talk about yeah. that wait a second. It was a good comment he just made. There's a first one right here. Oh, women aren't any more fake. And this, yeah. Yeah. I want to touch on that if we have a second. After yeah, go ahead. Gonzo's done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Gonzo. Go ahead, Gonzo. Oh, okay. Well, I um I mean that's basically well, I I'm trying to think of like how I could apply this. I also see some some comments here. Maybe I'll touch on that in a second, but the uh um I, you know, when it comes to like receipts and stuff, the only way I was able to really, I don't know. I felt like I, like you just have to be able to discern in that type of situation. Like clearly the guy who had created this course, he was onto the right information, but he had been pulled away from it. He had been distracted by this idea that sounded really nice. And I don't know, maybe, maybe I, maybe there's something to it. I mean, he says that it worked a hundred percent. Like he only recovered like a certain percent and now he recovered a hundred percent. I don't know. I'm very skeptical of this whole thing, but you just have to be able to discern because I know personally 
right? Because what ended up happening was I had like an acne problem for a really long time. And just recently over like the past several months, I was able to resolve it because I've probably been like deficient in choline for like decades, for like decades at this point. Like seriously, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge problem. And it, and like choline is kind of like an under research nutrient, but I started taking it and it resolved my issue. And I know that it resolved my issue because if, if I, if I stopped taking it, it would come back. The issue would come back. I was able to test it. I was able to, you know, do these experiments and no amount of resolving any internal conflict was going to correct that deficiency. Right. Well, like, no, no like, I agree and disagree, yeah. but you know, um, internal conflict can cause problems because, you know, I don't want to yeah, go into yeah. this too much. It, it, it creates cortisol, which is yeah, a major yeah. cancer creator. But that's another story. I want to go back to danger Russ. He had a great point. I forgot to point out one time he talks about, uh, you know, these dating coaches and their fake stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, he's right. I have caught a couple of dating coaches online who have like, thousands of followers and I sent them texts and he sent me a nasty response back where I said, you're clearly faking your conversations that you're showing in your videos. Cause I was doing research for one of my kids. So there's no way women react to the way you, you know, I said, you said, first of all, you don't have the looks, you look like a dog. And that's just what God gave you. I'm, you know, don't take it personally. There's no way a woman's looking at you saying, you're so hot, I'm dripping wet for you over a text. And, and then I showed it to my female friends, and they're like, he's clearly faking it. Because he's showing all time and time again that these disgusting lines are working. And he, he's right. Like, all these gurus put these fake transactions that can easily be fake. A lot of the dating coaches. A lot of um, traders. There's Anna Mako, the crypto queen. Who at one point was legit. Now she's showing, you know, her inst you know, all these people are buying her course to trade crypto, sort of what now the Coopers are doing. And she's showing her winning suggestions. Her losing suggestions when I, when some of her followers reached out to me who paid for the course is like she's only accurate 45% of the time. You know, but she's only showing her wins on her Instagram account. You know, and when you lose in crypto, losing 40% is the equivalent of losing if winning 80%. And that's a good just a good point. All these people who put their results, it's fake, and that's what's troubling, or it, it omits their data. And I think that's where a lot of people get fooled. They like to see the positives, but they don't really see the negatives mm -hmm. and stuff. Let me um let me bring on uh JC, man. JC is awesome. He's the only one I'm gonna allow on with an avatar coming. <laughs> JC, how you doing? What's up, JC? Hey, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Did you uh, catch the topic, the get it off your chest topic for tonight? Uh, no, I literally just joined. I don't have any context. Okay. Basically, the question or the, we'll call it what I was getting off my chest tonight was, how do you discern your guru, your idol that you follow on YouTube um, that you... Did we lose somebody? Who did we lose? Frank, Frank, Frank. Frank. Um, how do you discern, like people go on YouTube and they follow the guru, they follow their um, idol, whether it be, it could be all different things that they're following. How do you discern what's right, what's wrong? Whether it be somebody that's teaching you about cryptocurrency, whether it be a dating coach, whether it be somebody that is teaching you about finance, whether it be somebody that's teaching you about physical fitness, how do you discern that? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think it's just, you know, just judgment, really. I mean, it's, it's, if, if you're following a person or if you're making someone your idol, then you need to ask, like, what is it about that person that's drawing, drawing, drawing you into them? So, like, what message, what's resonating with you? And there must be some intuition that you have that, that whatever message that person is, um, is presenting, that it, it, it must resonate with you a little bit on the inside for you to have that connection. But then it also comes down to the authenticity of the information and how legit that person is and, um, you know, Basically, is it something that's just attracting to you in the moment because 
that's kind of it's almost a confirmation bias like if you're going through an experience in the moment and if you're having a hard time and you're having relationship problems and then all of a sudden you come across a guy who seems to have all of the answers for relationship problems you know do you go into it blind because you're 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 searching for an answer you're searching for you know some form of confirmation bias or do you kind of sit back and and listen to the guy kind of vet the guy to see you know who he is what is what his experience is what makes him that subject matter expert at the end of the day you know like what's his resume you know does he have anybody to to vet him does he have any references so i think it's just about you know doing our due diligence and not allowing ourselves to be sucked into to smoke and mirrors you know to to uh, to a snake oil and i think with like more so now than ever with, you know, social media and access to information and, and everybody is somebody essentially on, you know, online, like it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's YouTube. I mean, everybody has a platform and, um, I think it just comes down to us being able to vet that, to be able to recognize that things may not be what they seem and for us to have a system and mechanism in place to be able to kind of vet and, and cipher through all of the information online before we attach to it or, or, you know, before we, uh, take it for what it is. So, so what I'm seeing is now consensus on the panel right now seems to be receipts. I mean, that seems to be the, the consensus. Let me, let me give you my quick take on it now that I've kind of heard pretty much everybody here. My take on it is too, is that people are easy to follow. And there's a reason why people follow easy because they want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of a tribe. Okay. It's, I think the loner sometimes is looked, is frowned down upon. Somebody that's going his own way, not a MGTOW, but a, but a person going their own way, making their own decisions. Okay. A lot of people are afraid to make their own decisions and they need to be a part of that tribe or that pack. So the leader or the follower, the, the, the leader and then the follower, will now say, okay, I'm going to follow this leader and I'm going to make the decisions that he says I should make instead of me making them on my own free will. And I think that's the difference between a guru, an idol, a cult leader, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people are slash cult leaders, whether they believe it or not. They form this, this tribe where it's no longer, to me, a tribe. When I say a tribe, I'm part of a tribe. If I'm protecting, if I'm protecting my tribe or care about my tribe, when I say my tribe, I'm not saying it as the leader. I'm saying it as part of the tribe. But there's also a different point of reference for a guy who's a a idol and knows he's an idol or a so-called cult leader that when he says something, he knows everybody's going to do it. So that's my take on that is that people want to be a part of something versus rather than just self-help they want to be part of something so that's a great point tony and i just wonder if it's like the way that i interpret the question is like how do you how do you essentially like determine like what's what's like what's right or what's wrong right so it's like if you find somebody online who's filling that role then 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 how do we decide which for lack of a better term, tribe leader, do we associate with, right? Because you're absolutely right. I mean, we have that innate tribalistic uh, function where it's like we feel safe within numbers. We feel like we want to attach to something. We want to be a part of something. We want to feel safe within numbers. So it's either you stand for something or you stand against something. And there's not, and there's not a lot of nuance in between that, right? So it's either you're with team A or you're with team B. But then how is it that you decide to attach to that group or to, to that ideology? And is there anything that we can take away from um, our experiences or the fact that we have technology now that we're, we have access to all of these tribal leaders as beforehand, you had to be in a, like in a region or you had to be with it, like within a particular area to have access to those. But now with the infinite number of options online, how do we pick the best for us? Most people want to enslave you follow the people that actually want to set you free. And th that's very apparent after, after a short time. If somebody wants to keep you dependent, keep 
you know, or if they want to set you free. So Gonzo, you are taking the words out of my mouth. That was, I pretty much was going to say that it's somebody when they draw you in and won't let you be your own person. In other words, if you can't, if you can't expand or, or develop from their content without them, then you are definitely a follower. You need that person to lead you all the time. When you're drawn into a corner or into a space and you're not let out, to me, that's not the tribe you want to be in. A tribe works together, okay? People would rather be a part of a tribe versus being part of a, um, what would be the opposite of a tribe? Like Anarchy. An, well, anarchy, but. but Lone wolf. Lone well, wolf. no, 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 like, like. <clears throat> Everybody, I mean, it's really everybody follows the leader only. In other words, they can't do anything on their own. So I'm trying to think of a good term for that. You, you see, you guys see what I'm saying? You follow me on that? Sheep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, cult? basically a sheep and a, sh sheep and a shepherd, a cult. But yeah, I mean, it's really a cult. So and that word right there will trigger a lot of people. A cult. Oh, you're in a cult, or he's a cult leader. You know. Um, so, I mean, I mean, think of some of the, like, what's the, when you think of cult, who's the first person that comes to your mind? I'm going to go right around the panel. But me, it's going to be Charles Manson. Cult. Marty, how about you? Jim Jones. Okay. Frank, Jim Jones. Beautiful. Anybody else? Cult. Mormons. Who? He said Mormons. Mormons. Yeah, Mormons. Ocasio Cortez. Okay. <laughs> Dumb cold. I think of um, what's what's the um, what Charles Tay Russell. What's the big one in Texas? What was that guy's name again? Um, oh, Waco, Waco, David, Waco, David, Waco, Texas. David Koresh. David Koresh. David Koresh. Koresh. Yeah, these are true cults. Um, What's the other? I mean, you know, to me, like Scientology, that isn't that really kind of like, yeah, a, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a cult for because we'll they don't say, let you go. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll say for that's that's also a cult for a lot of Hollywood people. I think like Tom Cruise and a lot of those guys are Scientologists. Uh, John Travolta, John I think. Travolta. Yeah. So, and I believe a spaceship's going to come down and get them all. Isn't that what that's all about? Scientology, if I'm not correct. I thought that was uh, Heaven's Gate. That was Maybe that's Heaven's Gate, Gate. Oh. yeah. I get them confused. I'm not sure if they're getting a spaceship. I know somebody's getting a spaceship, but I just wasn't quite sure who it was. <laughs> all so. I know is they're all creepy. They're all creepy, and uh, they're all they're all messed up. <laughs> so. Yeah. So so I think that you know I think that I think we're kind of answering our question here is that when you have a tribe. I think a tribe is going to help each other. Okay. But you are going to have, I think in a tribe, you're going to have different, le different leaders at different times for different things. But when you're in a cult, I think the issue is, is that, um, I, I think the issue is that, um, what's, what's Anthony saying? Do not read the electric sky. I'm not sure what that is, but we won't read it. <laughs> but I think that when you, when you go on to now, you know, in, in our electronic age, YouTube gurus, um, advice. I think people think just because somebody's on the screen, it's now legit, you know? So, yeah, what Gonzo said, what Gonzo said, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, someone who, I think one of the things is, you know, we're talking about receipts. One of the things that can be a good indicator that the person is legit is person that wants to help and set you free, you know? And that that does make a lot of sense. And I, I should have – it was so clear. I almost didn't think about it because it's like so close to your nose because, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I kind of – as a person who's trying to be an influencer online, I do a lot to help people. Like I am a private teacher. I do charge for private classes, but I, tr I do a lot voluntarily. Like content that I create, people I interact with D um, – you know, who uh, DM me, uh, I do volunteer a lot of time because my aim is to help, is to help people, help people be better communicators. And I'm, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to pitch myself to get people more to, to follow. But what Gonzo said, it makes a lot of sense because uh, a person who is legit, 
they do want to see it's like what is that rising tides lift all ships right right raise all ships you know so a person who is legit does want to see others succeed as well and that was that was that was really prof you know profound Gonzo. so i i agree with that iron sharpens iron the group I'm gonna, sharp iron. Guys, I'm gonna get you guys riled up because i see a lot of people saying how democratic everything's a cult and i agree with them but i just want to warn you about cults and you know i you know i like Republican Party, especially the old party that was conservative, GOP. I have a big problem with you know making a golden statue and a one man saying he is the party. That bothers me, as maybe a cult leader, Trump. You know, um, I think the party stands for more than him. You know, I think his some of his actions are against what the party. You know, especially the moral values. There's a lot of good he does. There's a lot of good. I'm not going to deny it. But I think they're giving one man so much power that's become a cult. You mean the Great White Hope? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying. I, that golden statue really bothered me. And I know it bothered a few religious people too. Um, Who made the golden statue? I, I don't know about this. I haven't at heard CPAC, about this. they unveiled a golden statue of him. Hmm. And they wheeled it around. And, you know, the party stands for just more than a few of his views. There's more to it. It's more... Family values is very important, you know, and, you know, I, and everyone got mad when I bashed the party because of the alimony thing that the Republicans passed, but the party's more than one man. Um, party is, the party needs to start realizing that families are important, keeping families together, keeping jobs together, you know, keeping families grounded, teaching our kids not this stupidity of this gender stuff and physical responsibility, all this phys printing and physical, you know? yeah, financial no, and I, I'm a little disturbed that one man now controls it all, and then and and if anyone attacks him, they're not good Republicans. That's what a cult is. You take over the belief system of something. Yeah, you but know, like imagine but, if the Pope said, "If you don't if you don't listen to everything I say, I'm going to excommunicate everyone." That would be scary. Mm -hmm. If you're a Catholic, yeah, well, I couldn't care. Yeah, <laughs> if you're in, if you're in the Catholic cult, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I think that was out there. Relax. Relax. Yeah, well, I mean, even, Relax. Even with Trump, I mean, I li I like Trump. I, I I think Trump was was an awesome president. Trump did some things that I didn't really like. Like uh, he he passed in copyright small claims. I think that's a you know that's a disaster. Now, obviously, there was more to it. I. There's more to it than just the small claims that got passed in with a bunch of other things with that case act and and all that stuff. And that's not the only thing. But it's like I don't agree with everything that Trump did. You know, Trump was like, I remember at one point he was like, we should put every we should put people in jail for a year burning the American flag. And I agree with that sentiment. Like, I agree with the sentiment that it's a bad thing. Do I think we should actually do that? No, no, not really. I don't think that's a good idea. But I understand why he said it. I understand why he said it because uh it's to rile up the base too. It's to rile up yeah, the base. Because yeah. both parties both parties say and do things to rile up the base. What I don't like is, you know, even before COVID, he did expand the national debt when he made the tax cuts. He didn't make you know, when he did the tax cuts, he didn't cut um some expenses so it balances and that bothered me. That shows he's not a true conservative, at least fiscally. And the old Rush Limbaugh, I remember I was a kid sitting with my father, who was a conservative Democrat. Rush Limbaugh went after President Bush, the first Bush, because he raised taxes in a certain area, and he went nuts. You know, and and now the the true people are going the line, and that just bothers me. It just, I have to get off topic, but gurus aren't the all knowing. For once they claim to be, they are movement that they're the one. It's a cult, you know. It's like the Joker and his clowns, if you follow comic books. Well, you noticed a lot of people were saying, uh, you noticed a lot of people were saying um, that, you know, uh, you know, Jesus is on Trump's side or, you know, Trump's with Jesus and that sort of thing. And I'm like, you guys don't know that. No. You know, like, <clears throat> like my, you know, I guess the point that I have to make about it is that, you know, it's like I'm, you know, not to say that, that Trump's a, a bad guy or anything, but it's like, I don't really know who's doing what, you know, and I, I feel like you're, you're judging somebody, you're putting them on a pedestal 
when you're doing something like that. Like, I don't know, maybe there is a perfectly good reason why Joe Biden is now the president. Maybe, you know maybe, why. You know, maybe there's maybe there is a, uh, uh, you know, this yeah, is this a... Yeah, election was stolen. I mean, we know why. Well, well yeah, yeah. Well, it should I'm, have been close. Saying... It should not have been that close. It, he made so many blunders. He made so... Come on, we all know. But that's mm -hmm. another story for another... Mm -hmm. uh, he made so many mistakes. You, you know what? Well, I think... I think the age of influencers is going to be coming to an end, and I think the age of tribalism is going to be upon us. Yeah, you know, influencers can only thrive when there is ambition, when people have hope, when people can aspire to be something greater, uh, when people want to become the big forex trader, or they want to become that you know, uh, dating you know, uh, guru or whatever have you. I think those days are going to come to an end. I think we're we're headed towards economic hardship. I think the U.S. military might is going to be. Uh, unseated. I don't think we're going to be the great military power that we were in the years to come. I think there's going to be a lot of issues that are going to create tribalism and people are going to have to fall within the framework and, and the rules and the proximity of a tribal leader. So people are going to have to learn how to get along uh, before they can't get along. You know what I mean? So uh, I could tell you in my area where I live, tribalism is thriving. People are joining together. People are making alliances, and uh, they are—I don't know—that they see the future kind of in the way that I just described, and they are acting accordingly. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's that's a conversation that's going to be had and and continue to be had here soon. I couldn't agree with more with that. I couldn't agree with more of that. You know, like me reading quite a bit of Jack Donovan and stuff that he writes. It talks a lot about that. Another person who's part of uh, the fraternity I'm in, Jeff Putin, he just wrote a book, uh, Empire Divided, and is talking a lot about this return to tribalism. So so I think there's Jeff a lot of truth. To yeah, Jeff Putin. Putin, sorry. Jeff Putin. Putin. Sorry, Jeff Button. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I think there's a lot of tr there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to this uh, finding a group, a tribe, uh, 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 a group that that you belong to. And what is that saying, right? Hard times create strong men. You know, so you're gonna get a lot of this. I think pretty soon, if it's not already started, already this this the sifting of the wheat and the tares. You know, of who's who's solid and who's just gonna blow away with the wind. Okay, let, well, let, let me ask it you. Now. You're seeing tribalism now, big time. You're seeing it everywhere. Look, look at the manosphere. The manosphere can be considered a tribe. What's going on here? You're seeing it everywhere. Like, I have a lot of vets. My brother's a vet. He's still in the military. They, they hate both parties. They truly hate both parties. And ML made a comment, longtime Republican. And they mentioned about Bob Gole and John McCain getting dragged through the mud. Um, there's a lot. There's like. Everyone's starting to break away and trying to get their own factions because the majority is so powerful. They can't join the other side because the other side's so weak. So if the other side's so weak, they join. They make. They create their own little thing. I'm seeing it in New York. There's a big backlash. Well, American politics is dead. American politics is totally dead. If anybody has faith in the American political system, you know they they didn't just observe what just happened. What just happened was a total breakdown in the American political system, which has been long time broken because it's been corrupt and ruled by money and consolidation of power. So anybody who still continues to put their faith in Republican, Democrat, I, I don't know what to say to those people. I can tell you right now, I have no faith in that system anymore. I won't participate in that system other than at the local level because it, it doesn't matter anyway. So all I can say is, is get ready to bunker down, man. Incoming, incoming. That's all I can say, incoming. So just... Just be aware to that, man. We have enemies on the horizon. China is is going to be the, at our front door before Navy, we know it. Yeah, we are they got going, the biggest Navy right now, China. But if we lose we our are, rights, if we lose our rights, yeah, what's the and, point of being American? What's the benefit of being American if we lose our rights? What right? The right to vote? The right to vote? You don't have the right to vote. Your vote, vote doesn't count. doesn't matter. How about the right to You live vote? in New York, right? They were shipping your votes down by truckloads to Pennsylvania to go ahead and fill in those ballots there. The right to have money, the the money you have has lost 96% of its value since 1913 and it will continue to do so. So your money 
is, is being taken from one one side being taxed and it's being taxed by inflation on the other side. So so we will have no money as it exists in its current form. The money will collapse and crash. And that's another uh, you know danger that's on the horizon. And that's why there will be a new big dog on the block. Now, we need to like do something about it. I'm not saying like we should resign ourselves to this fate. Uh, but we need to recognize these are like the real problems that exist. And until we start, you know, uh, putting like our feet in movement and in, into action, uh, these problems are going to sneak up on us and it's going to be too late to do anything about it. And, and you know what? It may already be too late. We, we're already behind. The, these the, are the real issues of life. We're I not think. the top math country. We're not the top science country anymore. Our students have fell, fallen behind numerous countries by uh, numerous countries by now. Uh, the colleges have turned to shit. It's become more uh theory and political and it is actually learning uh you know this is why people laugh at me and i'm like listen i'm, I'm when i retire i'm gonna get a full pension at 55 I'm, I'm gonna look leave the country because the barbarians are coming i think i've said to you guys right tony barbarians are at the gate they're coming we're gonna let them walk right in you'll see that's how this country's turned let me do this real quick. I want to welcome a few people in the chat. There's some people that I know and some people I don't. ML, I'm not sure if you've been here before, but welcome. I want to welcome Freelance Ronan. Yes, welcome, buddy. It, great to have you here. Um, also, Don Coolio. Um, I think he's a new face. I might have seen him before, but I just want to make sure I mention everybody that's jumping in the chat. I also want everybody to know that at the top of the chat, I have the StreamYard link is pinned. So you are welcome join the live panel and get it off your chest. If you have a question, if you have a comment that you want to talk about, that's what we're here for tonight. You've got a great panel so far. We've got seven of us here. Um, I want to mention JC's avatar. I, I absolutely love that avatar. That is, that's the most savage avatar, I think, on YouTube. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Just the, JC, did you make that avatar? Uh, no, it was a friend of mine actually uh, sent it to me. I'm not sure okay. where he got it at, but I suspect um, either he made it or he found it somewhere. But uh, okay. based off the conversations we had, he sent that to me and said, I think that this avatar represents it, you 100%. So do it up. Dude, it's, just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just great. I love when you, I see it backstage and you're coming on. So, But I do want to let anybody know that's watching, um, this, this, show is, this show is for you and it's about you. It is get it off your chest Saturday night. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little, a little, a little spit on this. I'm gonna get it off your chest Saturday Appreciate night. Appreciate you, man. Express yourself. Okay, now that comes from Jesse Lee Peterson, and I want to show you <laughs> today. A new channel was made made for me. This is my new troll. Can you guys see that? It's a combination of me and oh, Jesse man. Lee Peterson. Okay, and it's called Tony Lee Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> So somebody spent the time to make an avatar and create a YouTube channel. So, and I'll probably tell you why they did it. Because when I first started this, I called it, I think it was Let's Talk About It. So I'm like, okay, we'll call it Get It Off Your Chest. But now Jesse, and I've only, I mentioned this to Gonzo, only in the past like month or so, I realized that when I started watching Jesse on Fridays, Fridays is a very busy day. So his show is called Get It Off Your Chest. Fridays. Express yourself Friday. So anyways, um, it's not that we're ripping off Jesse. I know they have the Hake news and we have Gonzo news. <laughs> it is very similar. Just saying. But well, there's uh, a lot of shows that have news. There's a lot of exactly, shows. That do that. Exactly. But I'm sure uh, I'm sure if Jesse was watching this, he would love this. In fact, I gave an invite out tonight to uh, to uh, Jesse and Nick, the producer, Nick Gonzalez, to make a cameo tonight and come and say hi. So, but uh, to me, that would be a great cameo tonight. Would be Jesse or um, or Nick Gonzalez. So, Nick, if you're watching, hey buddy, jump on or Jesse, amazing, jump on also. Well, you know it's uh, you know it'd be amazing actually. I think Tony, we need to get you uh, a table somewhere, set up a table, and have a little banner printed that says yeah. "Change My Mind" and put some sort of edgy topic on there. <laughs> if I have no, to pay really copyrights be... to Crowder. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's great though. So I feel honored that a YouTube channel was made. Um, I will consider it a troll, but that's cool. I'll take it. 
thank you, whoever did it and spent the time doing it. I appreciate it. So, so if Tony Lee Peterson wants to jump in the live chat, you are welcome tonight. <laughs> so, but um, all right. So let's let's get back to it. I mean, that was my get it off your chest topic for the night, and it seemed to spur a lot of discussion. Um, I'm going to just go real quick about tribes, and I'll ask you guys this too. Everybody on on the panel, you join a tribe to get um, you join a tribe to get advice. You join a tribe to learn something new or to get that fellowship and that guidance that you need. Um, whoa, I got a special guest going to jump on right now. When we're talking about tribes, we got the main tribe guy here. Here's Jack Donovan live. Nice. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. What's up, Jack? Awesome to see I'll you, it. man. Good, good. I'm glad you could jump on. Fantastic. Jack, real yeah, quick. I, 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 everything was set up for another podcast I did this morning, and I was here, so I was like, well, I might as well just jump on and say hey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good, good to see you. Real quick, I'm sure everybody knows you, but real quick, tell everybody quick quick bio on you and your books and all that good stuff. Hi, my name is Jack Donovan and I wrote a book called the way of men. <laughs> yep. It's uh, and uh, that's what I'm mostly known for. And uh, I have a new book out. Uh, it actually just came out in paperback today, actually on Amazon. Finally uh, is for, called fire in the dark. So uh, that's, I've been writing about masculinity and, uh, and uh, stuff like that for, uh, you know, 10 years, 11 years, something like that. Yeah. You know. Awesome. Yeah, good. Jack, I'm, I'm glad you're back on here, man. This is awesome. You jumped in right at the right time because we were talking about, we were talking Tribalism. about, tribes. yeah, we were basically talking about like, how do you discern like right now when you follow somebody on YouTube, okay, when you, there's so much social media, so many gurus, so many idols, how do you discern who to follow? This is a great question for Jack Donovan. So, um, you know, a, I, I, I'll often go on their podcasts and stuff, but like, you know, like if you're 25 and you have everything in the world figured out and you're a guru, maybe that's probably, you're probably not the guy. I don't know. Uh, you know, like it, th there's a lot of that, you know, you got, got a lot of life coaches who haven't lived a lot in the life. Uh, and that's kind of a red flag, I think a little bit. Um, but you know, a lot of it is perfect example, uh, because he's called, been called a fake guru. I know he has, uh, John Sunmez who you met because we, we both met him at the 21 convention and you yeah. meet that guy and he, he's obviously the real deal. Uh, I mean, he is what he says he is. Uh, and, and w once you meet him, you realize that. And I was, I was definitely impressed with that. And, and uh, you know, he clearly is someone who is doing what he says he's doing. And then you have a lot of the people who I think are maybe just uh, saying things, you know, LARP. like, yeah, well, they're LARPing or they're just, you know, they're, they're, consolidating and there's some use to this but they're consolidating a lot of other people's advice and kind of regurgitating it uh but there, there's other guys who have obviously become accomplished on their own and i think there's a little bit more weight to that uh so uh, you know and, and i I'm, I'm just a thinker i'm just a philosopher i mean i i'm not like a you know john's like a retired multimillionaire or something and, and uh uh kind of a baller uh you know i just uh i write books so I, I'm just a thinker and a writer. Uh, so you just have to evaluate what I have to say based on what I actually write and whether you think it's good or not. I try to live the, the way that I say I do. And I think that when people meet me, they uh, do know that um, they, 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 I, I have a, a reputation. People meet me and, and um, come off as pretty authentic, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, fake or pretentious or anything like that. So I think that, uh, you know, it, meeting people is a really good barometer, I think. I'm glad you said that because on the stream we had, oh, it'd be about two weeks ago on Thursday with Steve the Dean, uh, John Sanez and, um, and Anthony Johnson. Right. That was exactly what I said. I said, John, when I met you, I yeah. said, and John knew before I met him, I had some preconceptions about him, some, okay. some notions about him that to me were, what I made up in my mind, because right. you don't know until you meet someone. And I told John the exact same thing you said. John, I met you. I spent time with you. 
I broke bread with you and you're the real deal. You're as real as it gets. And that personal interaction with somebody makes all the difference in the world. So um, Anthony is our sign maker here. I'm not sure what his <laughs> signs are today. Okay. <laughs> But Anthony, Anthony, um, is this the first time you've met Jack Donovan? And I know you've read all his books, correct? I've read his books. Uh, yeah. I've never met him in person. I think I've seen him. On, I think I've been on the same. Uh, I've, I've been. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen him. I've heard him. Great guy. Thank you. Uh, I like, love your books, man. Thanks. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Good. And I hope. I'll, yeah. I'd love, love to meet you in person at the 21 convention or wherever you are. And Charlie, like great guy. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think I'll be there in the fall. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 working out myself. So watch out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll don't just, start. Hey, don't just bump into me. You're gonna know about it. <laughs> you know? yeah. Anthony is our comic relief too because he's actually he used to live in Pasadena. Okay. Now he's in too. Pasadena. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But so, 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 so Jack, like you say, when you meet somebody in person, to me, that's, that's, that is a big difference. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's been so many people, I mean, you know, before I met you in person, you used to scare the hell out of me, um, <laughs> but, but Jack, you no longer <laughs> scare the hell out of me. Um, yeah, no, no, I'm just a nice guy and it's really disappointing. I know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, when I met Elliot Hulse, uh, you know, he was another one that, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to handle him because, you know, his, his like online persona is like, so, and then, uh, and he's like up in your face and like, whatever. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do that in person, man. I uh, like, uh, like that's a lot of energy for me. Uh, but in person, he's super chill. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, uh, obviously he's, he's kind of in his own head, but like, he's, he's definitely a super chill guy and, and it was good to meet him. So, you know, people are always different. Obviously you're, when you're online, um, or anywhere. I mean, anybody who has a public persona of any point, you're, you're trying to get a certain thing across. And uh, sometimes it can be really fake. And sometimes, you know, it's just a refined version of the, I like to think my online persona is, is uh, just a, a better version of who I really am, you know, like a, a cleaned up version, you know, but, uh, you know, some people are just polar opposites, you know, and so that's, it is what it is. Let, let me ask you a question, Jack. Have you ever met anybody who um, who you had a, a preconceived notion about and they lived up to your preconceived notion? Um, if I did, I probably wouldn't say. Uh, okay. Because I, I honestly, and this is John actually just made a big point about this uh, recently, and I, I get, had a little sidebar discussion with him about it when I saw it. Uh, because I, I don't really like to do shit talking. Yeah, you know, no, like, I don't shit talk anybody yeah. live. I mean, but I mean, yeah. I'm not saying to mention anybody's name, but have you had that right. that experience? I think everybody has. Like, boy, I thought he was an asshole. You know what? He is an asshole. I yeah, mean, I mean, I, I guess, I guess, I don't even get surprised or enough. It's hardly, it's hard to even remember if that happened because, like, <laughs> if I just expect someone to be an asshole, I just, if yeah. they are, I'm just like, eh, all right. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's not, it doesn't really blink on the register, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, yeah. So let's, let's, um, let's go around the panel. JC, are you familiar with Jack Donovan? JC, you there? He did. He did. Um, anyways, it's funny too, because I actually sent Elliot a Hulse an invite for tonight. So you oh, never know if I jump on. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, um, when you jumped on, we were talking about tribalism. And, and what cool. I was saying that, like, when you join a tribe for some sort of direction or some sort of influence, and you get the influence and direction that you need, and you leave that tribe, do you think that's okay? This is what's going to discern to me between a tribe and a cult. Um. Well, I mean, there, I don't know if there's that much of a difference. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, no, I mean, obviously, because I, I, I resemble that remark. Uh, you know, okay. I, I did join a tribe that I was oathed into for life. Okay. Um, and so that was kind of a big deal. And I took it seriously. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm done with you guys, whatever. 
I, it was it was something I struggled with for a long time because it wasn't working out and for a lot of reasons, and um, I needed to go, and uh, and, and there was just a lot of tension, and it needed to happen. So uh, that was a rough thing because I took that seriously, uh, but and then I think a certain kind of try. I mean, like okay, uh, like biker gang mentality because the, the thing I joined was kind of on that kind of page. It was on that kind of level. And, uh, you know, that's, that's very tribal. If you, I mean, to be fair, I mean, any, uh, you know, biker gangs are pretty tribal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really get around that. And, and when you leave, they don't want anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, if, if they don't kill you, <laughs> you know, like they don't want you around. And so, I mean, like, obviously, all the, the tribe that I left, I don't have a contact with any of those people, aside from the people who left after me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, I think you can pass through a group of people that's a little looser than, like, a blood oath kind of situation. And uh, then that becomes a little bit more uh, flexible. You know, and, and it becomes healthy. I mean, like, you have this group of friends, and you need to level up and go to the next thing. And that doesn't mean you hate those people uh, that you, you learn things from, but uh, you need to go to the next thing and that's okay. But uh, as far as, you, you know, like there are a lot of groups, I mean, like that you leave and then if you leave, then you're not welcome anymore. And it makes sense because to a certain extent, like if there's a, a group, an honor group is, is a group of men that, you care about their opinion of you and you they care about yours and that's the whole that's what it means and when you leave you're saying i really don't care about your opinion anymore mm -hmm. so in a way you're like i said that i was going to stay and i'm leaving so obviously i don't care what your opinion is so i'm going and so they're gonna obviously not think well of you and you're not going to think well of them which is fair you know i but yeah, I mean it's it's a thin line, but I think tribe and cult. Because if you're really in, I think a, a tribe. Because there's there's the loose kind of modern marketing definition of tribe, and then there's a, a like a real tribe from old school ways. I mean, you're talking about shared fates. Like you're a people, like like we're this tribe, and we're always going to be this tribe. And uh, this that's it's a whole identity, so you really don't get to leave, you know. And uh, in the way that, you know, if you're Amish, you know, I mean, and, you know, like, yeah. that's, people would say that's a cult or whatever, but that's a modern thing that survived. But you know, if you were in Germanic people and you were in the Hari tribe or you're in the this other tribe over here, uh, you know, you're not you're not in the other tribe. You're in their tribe, you know, and it's very separate. And that's your. It's a it's a very distinct identity. Yeah, it's and part of who you are. Identity, you know, right? It's part of who you are. You become you're you're one of them. It's your title. It's it's this yeah. is who you are. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would yeah. agree. Yeah, I mean gangs. I mean uh, the sign is blood in, blood out, and yeah, that's uh you know the mafia. The mafia would be a tribe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the mafia we would tribe, and then the uh, there's also the uh, uh, obviously you know your MS 13s and all all your gang gangs. You know, so I mean, I'll give you I'll give you an example, Jack, is mm -hmm. that I mean, I know a little bit like in Florida here, like live. I mean, live behind me when I say 60 feet from here um, for and Danny died about three years ago, but he was in the Warlocks. I'm sure you've heard of the Warlocks. Yeah, I think I think we've talked about in person. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Great what Warlocks. Is that cosplay or something? Uh, no, I, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't tell him that. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it was, um, you know, people, I know when he had moved in here, people were kind of like nervous and it's like, what a nice guy. What a good guy. People were worried. I'm like, you're safer there with him than having a police officer living next door to you. Just yeah. so you know. Um, but he was a good guy and he lived by a code. I mean, yep. he did. Those were his brothers. And yep. when I was anywhere else and happened to run into, whether it be the roadhouse just down here and some of the other guys were there, and I would just say, hey, Danny's my neighbor, you know, it would be 
instantly I was like, Hey, how you doing? That kind of thing. Right. You no, know, it was, uh, it was, you could see their brotherhood and their yeah. trust just the way they treated me from being his neighbor and a friend of his. So. Yeah. And man, that's, that is super appealing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's really appealing. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's really what I wanted when I joined that group. Uh, you know, like when I joined the group that I joined, uh, I wanted that because I mean, it is you're around it and you're like, I took a date one time and they're like, she's like, I could see that all the other men weren't looking at me because they respected you. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that. I mean, it's very, cause it was very much in that biker kind of mindset. And, uh, it, 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 it there is something, definitely something to that, that it, that is very appealing and very, and, uh, you know, there's definitely something about uh, going into a place and you have like 10 guys with you and they're the guys, mm -hmm. you know, like they're your guys. And, uh, that's, that, that's a really cool feeling. Unfortunately, the way the world works right now, you're also putting a giant sign on your back and, uh, then telling everybody, which is the point. Uh, but also it makes you a target in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. And especially, you know, with all the surveillance things and everything that you have right now, now you're, you're being tracked. Mm -hmm. uh, in every way anyway. And now you have a big sign on your back saying, Hey, I'm part of an organization that maybe you don't like. Uh, so it, it becomes like wearing a big sticker that says, come fuck with me uh, on your, on your thing. So you really have to be committed to that. And that's, you know, a lot of those guys are okay with going to jail and, uh, and all that. And I would prefer to not, uh, personally, I would prefer to not go to jail. So though, you know, it's just, there's things that, uh, if you, you don't want to create things that invite unnecessary conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, and some and unfortunately, being one of those groups definitely does that, uh, you, you know. So it, there's there there's some pros and cons. But yeah, having having a, a strong crew like that that really is a tribe, uh, that's 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 definitely something worth having. Now I look at the Manosphere as a as a large tribe, a confederacy we, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> different a confederation we'll, of tribes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. sub tribes. Yeah, basically. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this well, is the but, one thing I know. Like, I know John Sanmez had put out a video last week about he's out of the manosphere. Yeah, that's and that's the conversation we had when he said that. I was like, hey, I know why you're saying that. Okay, and he, here's my feeling about it. And here, are we still cool? And you know, like basically, like I, we had a little conversation. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, totally. We're we're, we're fine." Oh, okay, I, yeah. I I I get it totally, and I yeah. get what he was trying to say. Yeah, people, yeah. it's not like he's trying to disassociate himself with with you or with anybody that's involved. Right. But I, if you look at my comment on that video, uh -huh. I want to say I was one of the only ones. I don't want to say being super honest, but I was super honest. I said yeah. I appreciate your point of view. I don't remember the comment. But I was being very honest. It's not a knock because I like John. I, yeah. I consider him a friend. But my opinion on that is you leave the manosphere pretty much the same way you leave the mafia. There is no difference. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a choice. You're yeah. under that umbrella. Because I had talked to Anthony about this before. Yeah. I said, well, my channel is really not a manosphere channel. It's like, wait, you've interviewed, you know, Coach Greg Adams, Alpha Male Strategies. You've you have these discussions. He's like, oh, you're under the umbrella for sure. And I'm like, well, you know, I guess you're right. Kind of, I guess I am that. But you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you can't just leave this umbrella. You can't do it. This is. Well, it just, it just depends who's going to, it, it depends who's really enforcing it. Because there's, there's kind of an even bigger thing, uh, umbrella. There's, there's basically. A, a really large group of, of men having discussions about masculinity uh, and in a positive way. And then there's, and they're kind of all in the manosphere really, but a lot of them aren't, you know, like officially. And like I always say this when I talk to Anthony or the other people and in chats and so forth, you know, like there's, there's Ryan Mickler who I wouldn't think he's actually part of the manosphere, but if he's, he's doing the same thing we are, you know, he's talking about the same thing and the same idea. He's, you know, in, in, if anything, at a more mainstream level. And then like some people would say like they're Jordan Peterson's or the part of the manosphere or the, uh, you know, when, the, but they wouldn't really say that, you know? So it's just, you know, like, I think the manosphere really 
I mean, Anthony said he's president of it, and I was there at the table when he decided he was going to say that. <laughs> and I was like, all right. You know, like, no skin off my ass. Cool. Mm-hmm. cool. Don't, yeah, go, go for it. You know, it's not like he's going to, like, order me to go to, like, Manosphere Jail or anything. You know, like, I don't <laughs> have to worry about it. So, you know, and he's always been super cool to me. So I'm like, good, knock yourself out, man. So I, like, I think I sent, when I sent him his book, he, he uh, I think I addressed it to the president. <laughs> the <manager laughs> or whatever. You know, and that's, it, it doesn't bother me. And I think it's, you know, he's a good dude. So whatever, you know, and, uh, but there, there's a bigger, it's just like, there's a group of people under that heading and then there's something bigger that's happening, which is good that it's, there's something bigger that's happening. Cause a lot of, a lot of guys need to talk about this stuff, whether they think they're in the manosphere or not. And I, I thought when John said that thing, I, I didn't really feel like he needed to do that. I don't think that that was necessary because I don't. It's not like he's going to stop talking about masculinity. Yeah, and it's not going it, to. He's really going to start talking about the same things. I think he just wanted to disassociate from what he saw as as a kind of a little back and forth. You know, obviously because there's the two groups or whatever. Uh, that, are, that there's two camps that are always fighting with each other, and I think he wanted to get out of that, like get out of the way of that, you know. And and I can see that, you know, because I, yeah, you know, I'm not really in that either. I, I just, you know, I, I was around and I've met all the people and whatever, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to be involved in like shit talking, you know. That's not my deal, and that's kind of what he was just saying too. Yeah, no, I, no, I get it. I mean, you know, I was lucky enough to, you, you, this is what's kind of funny is I made this comparison is where I do a live stream about how the Manosphere has failed men. And okay. it's been clipped all over YouTube. It's got, for my small channel, it's got over 2,000 views and growing. I, a week later, I do a video on how the Manosphere has helped men. I think it's got 400 views. <laughs> so, so what... <laughs> What does that tell you about guys? Are they more interested in conflict and drama? And drama I think that's humans. Yeah, drama sells. Yeah, I mean that's why Twitter exists. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's. A, I mean, and I was just literally just on the podcast I was on earlier today. I mean, that's what we talked about for a half an hour. Is is that uh, the idea that um, it's you know it, many things on the internet are, are made to appeal to the worst part of human in, human tendencies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's an old story about, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a joke or actually happened, but there was a paper that came out that it was called Good News and it would only print good news and then no one read it. You know, like it's it, it, kind of the same deal. You know, mm-hmm. it's like an old, old joke or whatever. But uh, and it's true because people don't focus on, uh, you know, positive stuff as much as they focus on conflict because you know it's we're you know gossipy creatures by nature to a certain extent like oh what's going on over here and you know like uh, oh shit it's going down you know mm-hmm. there, there's all this there, everybody wants to be in on it when this when it starts to go down and there's conflict and what's there's drama i mean uh you know drama is is what makes stories interesting right i mean like it, you know if it, it, it something without conflict is a story in which nothing took place. You know, like, you know, you can't have a story. There's no, there's no plot arc unless there's conflict. So people were looking for that, you know, I'm sure Jack, you've, you've been in this situation like I have where somebody has told you something and you wish they didn't like, you know what? I don't want to know that. Yeah. I don't need to know that. Yeah. But it still gets those endorphins jacked up when you do know. For some yeah. strange reason, so. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. So let me uh, let me go around the panel because uh, Marty, Mr. Finn, Anthony, Frank, JC, Gonzo, we got Jack Donovan here. You guys got any questions for him, man? I mean, I'm stoked that he's here. Um, no, he's his neck intimidates me. It's too big. <laughs> I thought Brian Erlach had the biggest neck I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I feel like I have a rookie neck. I need to get bigger. I think of that Antifa professor. Do you know you know the guy I'm talking about? The there's that Antifa prote- professor, and he's got that really really long neck. Like it's scary. So I'm, it's the thickness of this guy's neck. 
got muscles in it. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it might be, it might be the angle. I mean, I'm, not, I'm having to go back like this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got some questions about your neck, Jack. I tell <laughs> you. <laughs> it's, it's not I the neck book, book, so I'll give him hats. I like this but book a anyway. lot. <laughs> you know what? Mr. Finn, this is the first time you've met Jack Donovan, correct? Yeah, I've I've interacted once or twice with him uh, on Instagram. I actually okay, look forward to it. Okay, it's the same it. Mr. Finn. I was actually wondering yeah. that when I saw that up in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm expecting the book shortly here in the mail. Right? Yes, it, did, uh, it, didn't get, it didn't get in the mail. So yeah, yeah, good, I remember good. sending it out. So we're good. Yeah, so <laughs> no, so we, this is the first time. This is the first time I'm, I'm seeing you. So it's it's an honor. I, I do I do appreciate your work. And I've actually, I think I mentioned uh, to you on Instagram that I actually use some of your newsletters in a lot of my classes because I have advanced <laughs> students. And, and I think what you write in your weekly, your weekly email uh, newsletters is great stuff. And I use it. So uh, keep up the good work. And I really appreciate your work. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to meet you like for the first time. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day I really look forward to go to 21 convention. You know, yeah. I got a lot of brothers in there now. I'm in the fraternity of brother um, excellence and oh, nice. yeah. I, I, so I really, I'm in Brazil, so I don't know. I mean, if I'll get a chance to go there, but when I make it to the States, I do tend to go there and maybe one day we'll shake hands. So cool. keep cool. it up. Yeah. That's no, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking of tribe, like the, uh, I mean, I really think to their credit, the fraternity excellence, uh, They've done it the best and in the most positive way as far as creating a tight group of people that you can do over the internet. It's really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you see those guys, when you go to 21 and you see all the, 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 the FOE guys, uh, it's, it's definitely like a, its own little pack, you know, which is the way it should be. You know, like they, they're their own little crew, which is kind of cool. Yeah, when, I've, when, I, when I discovered them, you know, because I just – I've been on this journey just really recently because uh, it was just October of this last year where I really just started getting into this circle of people and like you and Elliot Halls and all these people because uh, uh, this is all new to me. But when I met Zach online also and, and he opened up the doors in January and it was exactly what I was looking for because I've been – uh, you could say a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm I'm one of four boys, you know, so I come from a pretty good sized family, and right. so I'm used to having a pack. And for, for many years, especially for my adult life, I've been on my own. And I've been here in Brazil practically on my own for over a decade now. So when I when I found the group, it was exactly kind of what I was needing. A bunch of guys trying to just make me or hold me accountable and make me a better version of myself, which I've been doing on my own. I've been I've been working on myself to get better and being a part of these guys it's just been it's been great because we uh, i have so i think it was jc said and it's right iron sharpens iron you know we need we need a group us men we can't be lone wolves but we sh i don't think our group should be so big either like we just let everybody in there should right. be a vetting process and stuff just to make sure because like you said about this what a tribe is it's, it's a group of people a group of men who share the same values who are fighting for the same outcome and uh you hold everybody accountable to, and you listen, and you correct, and you work together with one another. So, yeah, I love it. Great. Yeah, good to meet you, man. Finally, yeah, good to meet you. Yeah. I want to ask JC. JC, are you there? JC, are you? There? Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Um, I'm, are you familiar with Jack Donovan? Uh, no, actually, I'm not. No. Okay. Um, JC, you live, I believe, don't you live in the Oregon coast, that area? Yeah, I'm up in the Pacific Northwest here. Okay, Jack, you just moved from there, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, JC, um, Jack has wrote quite a few incredible books um, about masculinity. Um, and um, I want to say he's a, he's, he's a philosopher is what he is. I mean, he's a, to me, he's a philosopher. Of, I'll say a philosopher on masculinity and I don't want to. I don't want to bastardize your work by any means, Jack. But I want to say a philosopher of masculinity, tribalism. Um, oh, geez, what what other what other phrase? I think that's I fair. I think that's good. We can go there. Okay. That, uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. So, yeah. JC, if you have any questions, because JC, you always have great questions. Um, if you have any questions for Jack, man, get them out there. Um, I mean, I don't have anything specific. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not familiar with your work, Jack, at all, so I can't really no engage in anything specific. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you live in Oregon. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, 
but yeah um <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like i said like i'm not too familiar with with your with your work specifically so i don't have any um any I specific questions but i mean yeah i'm here to contribute to any conversations anyway so yeah cool cool yeah gonzo how about you because i know you've read jack's work yeah, you know, I'm 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 pulling a brain fart right Tell now. me the story of how you found Jack's book because that was a good story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was um I had a a friend this was uh this was years ago. Um but my friend, I can't remember. There was another guy who'd written a book and I'm trying to think of who it was. There was there was several. There was um and I remember his book had apes on the cover. Um, that's okay. very vague, but there was this, this dude who had apes on the cover of his book and I can't remember who it was. But he first told me about about this guy, and we were talking about you know we were doing audiobooks. We were both kind of getting into the audiobook business, and and we had started working for Aaron Clary. And then at some point he was like, you know, my buddy, he was like, you need to read this, and um and it was the the way of men on on top of that. So basically, it was just a whole mix of things, and that's how I came across it. So right, is my yeah yeah. So that was, I guess, my. I don't know if that was my introduction to the, the manosphere. It's kind of weird because I feel like even before that there was like Elliot Hulse. like I feel like he might have been like I don't know who the first guy was. Like, well, I, I mean, no you, said, you said Aaron Clary, mm -hmm. and he's a he's been around for forever. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know when he started. Like I don't know what when the timeline really begins. Like at, at what point? And I know like Anthony Johnson. He's been doing. He's been working on like twenty one convention for like fifteen years or something, right? So, yeah, I, I, he he and I have been around for about the same amount. I, I actually wrote my first book in like two thousand seven. I think that's when he started, mm -hmm. yeah, like doing the same thing. So, yeah. And Way of Men was your first book, right? Or was it? Uh, I had some other stuff before that, but uh, oh, okay. Way of Men is the important one. Just showing some comments here, um, Frank. How about you? We'll go to you next. Hey, what's up, Jack? Hope you're doing well, man. Definitely enjoy your content. Um, we had an opportunity to meet at the 21 convention very briefly. I very much enjoyed your um, your talk on Stay Solar. It was really awesome. It was nice to see you in person. And uh, we didn't really get really to talk, but you know, I could get the vibe that you were definitely an authentic dude. So. I uh, definitely enjoyed meeting you. I continue to enjoy following your content. I haven't had an opportunity to read any of your books yet, but <clears throat> my mind is working right now. I'm saying I probably have one of his books on my shelf. I should probably go and take a look at it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have any questions, but, you know, thank you so much for being here tonight. And, and you know, it's been a blessing just to, to hear you and be part of the same panel with you. I could tell you that I left uh, New York City and the East Coast uh, to move out to the Ozarks, to, to, to the Missouri Ozarks, you know, in search of a more uh, simple tribal type of life. And uh, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. It was kind of our goal to retire in that direction. Um, but we were able to do that early. And, you know, we're thankful for that. And we're, we're living good. We think we're well situated for the future. Uh, and yeah, you know, I, I think that your work is, is kind of aligned with some of those ideas. So uh, I think we definitely share some commonalities there. So it's nice to be here with you tonight, sir. Cool. Thanks. And so, Jack, tonight's tonight's show is called Get It Off Your Chest. So All right. ask our special guest, Jack Donovan, is there anything you want to get off your chest tonight besides 400 pounds of, of, uh, bar, of uh, barbells? So. Dude, seriously, I want to get the the lactic acid out of my chest right now because uh, I, I <laughs> like, no, I I uh, that's just funny that you said it that way because uh, okay. I, I literally I, I work out this really cool gym on Fridays. Uh, it's uh, Mark Twight, the guy who trained the guys for three hundred. Oh wow! Um, and then and he also trained uh, the guy for Man of Steel. Uh, so you make a bill. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's trained Superman, and so that's cool. And uh, so I, I go work out and do whatever crazy bullshit he comes up with us for to do, to do on Friday nights. And I had already done, you know, like some chest work in the morning. And uh, he he had us do he, he has us do these crazy workouts that are way too complicated to explain. But 
somewhere in there where there were 55 reps of 205 pound bench presses <laughs> and uh followed by like an overhead press uh, overhead push presses of 55 reps at 135 pounds so um my chest is tore up <laughs> right <laughs> so um, so you I can get it off your chest tonight yeah yeah i have to get my chest off literally <laughs> you know which is probably good i guess you know like it, it contributes to the overall swole but uh you know it's uh i don't know as far as shit i'm mad about uh, i run my mouth too much as it is online almost anyway like i, I have to keep stuff on my chest a little bit or i'll get in trouble um uh, you know i i i think with everything that's going on in the world right now i just uh just on a constant basis for the past year or so uh you know it's it's like well what bullshit is happening today you know it, it's it's like what gun control week so there's that yeah it is it is yeah that's a little bit crazy yeah i mean that's i guess that's what i'm pissed off about this week uh but but uh i mean that's just par for the course lately yeah is we've big... go ahead gonzo oh, i was just gonna say is it a bigger threat to speak up or to stay silent well that's the big question mm -hmm. uh you know i think there's going to become a time i mean I, I was thinking as i was driving this morning over here I, I was thinking uh uh you know there may come a time when people wish they would have done more in the near future like in the next five in five years from now there may be a time when you people realize that their window to act has passed and uh i'm not going to elaborate on what that might mean but uh you know it's it's you know a lot of bad things are happening right wow. now so a, a lot of big trouble is happening and uh like gun control I, there's there's a thing about staying in your lane a little bit uh in terms of like i already talk more about politics than i should i'm like philosopher you know like guru guy and i should probably do more of that and uh not get myself canceled uh because you know the more well known you get the more can <laughs> the, the more easy it is the bigger your target because you know as the target you become yeah 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 and i've done pretty well of staying out of the 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 wicked eye of sauron so far uh so you know that is you know like a, you know something i'm i would like to keep uh, I, as i said i would like to not go to jail and i would also like to be able to make a living and not have to go get a job at like costco it, uh it, <laughs> you know because that that I, I would prefer to keep doing what I'm doing. Isn't it crazy how in this weird cancel culture world, this world where the fact that you even have to say, we talk about politics, we then we're like, well, we really can't talk about it, but it's in your face. Like when you mentioned the whole gun control thing, it's gun control week. That like triggered me. And I'm like, oh man. Right. These, because when I saw something out, I'm like, this is so irritating. So you made a real profound statement a few about a minute ago where you said, basically, the time to act is over. I mean, in other words, it's past. I don't know if it is past, but it might. I mean, in five years, we might realize that it was or that it was a year from now or that it was three years ago. Like, we don't really know really now, but uh, there is. I, I, I mean, I don't want to get all black pilled on stuff. I, I, I'd much rather say, "Hey, uh, what can we do?" Uh, because that's been a big thing that I've been. That's a big drum that I've been banging on recently. Is that um, we're the adults right now? Like, it's not like we're kids and the world is being run for us. Um, if anyone's going to do something, it's our job. So. Uh, and that that's going to mean something different for everybody else for for every everybody and their everybody's skill sets everybody's level of exposure everybody's resources but you know you're going to want to wish that you did something uh you know it's like obviously you know the joke is i'm like I, i'm not electable i'm not running for office that's not real uh you know but uh i know people who may and uh that and i would love to support them and uh you know and there and there's 
I think everybody has their own way. I mean, I, I think Tanner and I might are working on a project together that we might try and fill a gap that we see. Um, because there's going to be, there's a really a time right now that we need to create our own media and we need to create our own, um, platforms because those are all being taken away. Yep. So it's really a time of creation and in a way, maybe they're pushing us really hard. Um, and that's a good thing in the way that we can't just be like, oh, everything's going to be fine. They're still going to let us do this and that and the other thing. It's been, very much been, it's been very strongly, it's been made clear who is on what side of everything. And so if you're not on that side, you're going to have to look for something else. You know, it's I, almost, yep. go ahead. Who, who was speaking, JC? Yeah, like it's almost as if we have this fear of action that prohibits us to speak up. But I kind of question that if we don't speak up now, then if we fast forward to five years from now, then then the result of not speaking up will cause a situation that will result in, let's say, like more stress, for an example, right? So we're going to look back and say, you know, although we were fearful to speak up at the time, the result of not speaking up has now created an environment that is more stressful than if we had to speak up at that time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's just a question of what speaking up means. I mean, because what's been taken away in many ways is like the ability to run your mouth with impunity on Twitter or to run your mouth with impunity on Facebook or something like that. And I don't think it's, I think it's actually past time for running your mouth. I think it's time for people to do things and create things and push in a different direction rather than just being like, Hey, this is wrong. You know, because I think we're already past that. Like, yeah. I think now people have picked their sides. You know, it's I, not like you're going to speak up and be like, and Karen down the street is going to change her opinion. You know, and, and, and she's like, Oh, you know, you're right. You know, you should have the right to bear arms. Uh, it's not like that's going to happen. So really, it's it's about picking sides. And I mean, my personal thing uh, in the past year has been like, you know, if you're if you're not down with freedom, then fuck you. I like you. I don't want you in my life. You're not my friend. You're not anywhere near me. Uh, and uh, I, you know, it's obviously I am not going to stop buying Apple computers tomorrow because they're in California. Uh, but you know, there's certain compromises we're going to have to make everywhere. You know, it's funny. You talk about that, Jack, about the freedom. I, I was on a, a yeah. Zoom meeting Zoom meeting this morning. I'm in, I'm in a WhatsApp group of international teachers and English enthusiasts. And every okay. once in a while on Saturdays, we get together on Zoom and, you know, discuss things and help people with English. And there was a, there was a guy in Africa uh, on the Zoom meeting. I think he's from Kenya. And I was I was kind of talking about this, about like how these lockdowns are nonsense. Because here in Brazil, they're, they're locking back down cr like crazy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they really work, huh? I mean, it's, we're in a year now. We're coming up to the year anniversary. And this guy from Africa is like, oh, you Americans are, are very, uh, what do you say, crazy about freedom. And I say, who in the right mind wouldn't be? Like, really? Right. You, you want, you, you'd like to be led around or told what to do? You, seriously, I have to, I have to explain to you the importance of freedom. It, uh, it shocked me that he said that. I'm like, seriously? Yeah, and that's yeah. what scares me because so many people now are so willing to just give up the freedom. They don't want to make the tough choices because, and if you think about it, that's what freedom is. You got to make those tough choices. You got to take those risks. There's no guarantee, and so many people, the way I see it nowadays, they're afraid of those hard choices. They don't want to make them. They want to sit down, eat their bag of potato chips, and watch Netflix and whatever, receive a paycheck from the government, and. Where is that going to lead us? It drives me up insane. Well, they're they're infantilizing themselves. They basically want it, they're basically becoming women and children. Uh, basically, I, that's what they want is that they've they they want daddy to give them allowance and tell exactly, them what to do. That's exactly and, what I told that guy. I yeah. said I don't need the government to be my daddy. I know yeah. how to make I know how to make my own choices. I know how to live my life. I don't need them to take care of me. That's that's the exact the point I made today. Yeah, and that's what people want. And like I I just want daddy to come and tell me what to do. What are we doing today? What's right and wrong? What's uh? Yeah, and we've always had some level of that. I mean, you know, I'm saying that, and I'm promoting religion, uh, you know, like this uh, uh, archetype of the father. Uh, but uh, I mean, we always have had some of that. But they really, on every level, they they want to be led around, and uh, yeah, 
yeah, told what to do and given an allowance and, uh, you know, just for existing and, and it's, it's disgusting and, and they don't want you to have the ability to do anything else to threaten that. Uh, and I, I, I don't even know what the point of that person being alive is, you but know, Jack, you frankly, think, you know, Jack, like, you if, think, yeah, sorry, I mean, yeah, like you yeah. think that some of that has to do with the fact that you know, we create these social. That's because 95% of the population will follow 5% of the population, which are the leaders. And right now, the strongest leader, unfortunately, is media and government. So people are more than happy to bow down uh, to that leadership because they don't see any other strong leadership that they can get behind that is going to uh, bring them to that final solution or outcome that they so desire. So. You know, I'm a huge proponent of just making your own way, uh, doing what you got to do, uh, doing what you think is right, getting around the people that you want to be around and, and making it happen. You know, I think that, you know, while we talk about making our own platforms and making sure that we can continue to earn money into the future and, and kind of keep hope alive, as it were, we have to start thinking about the infrastructure questions. How do we maintain continuity of Internet connectivity? How do we create our own economy? How do we create our own resources? Uh, how do we grow our own food? How do we provide for our own security? These are questions that we're all going to be finding ourselves uh, asking or, or, or needing to ask or dealing with in some capacity uh, what I believe you know, will be in the, in the near future. So um, these are probably the kind of conversations that, that, that we should be having. You know, I'm kind of looking at it like, hey, these are the days of Noah maybe, and uh, I want to get my family and the people that matter to me in the ark uh, kind of before, before there's no more opportunity to do that. I don't know that we can save the nation. I don't know that we can ever go back to what was. What was before will never be again. That kingdom is past. There's a new kingdom coming. And uh, it's, it's going to be kind of what we make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what I mean. I mean, I think it's past the, the time for saying like, you know, like, Hey, hey, Karen, I'm mad at you uh, that we're at the point where like, we, yeah, we need to have uh, grown up discussions about infrastructure and things like that. Like what is uh, it? What do we want? And how do we like you said, uh, you know, get server banks and get this and they get that. And and uh, and that's, you know, more the direction that people need to be uh, talking rather than, you know, we already see what's coming and what's happening right now. And it's naked and they aren't hiding it. And, and so it's a matter of. Uh, I do think there's worth, especially in low at the local level, of supporting people like politicians and so forth who are doing, are trying to do the right thing, or they just happen to be doing the thing that you agree with, whatever. Uh, you know, like that. I think there's value in supporting that, um, because if you if you just say everybody, no matter what they do, sucks, then then you're really just giving them cotte blanche to just do whatever. And I, I don't think every single person who's elected to office is probably evil uh, and, and, and wants to you know, do bad things. But, uh, you know, I do think there is a, a question of, uh, you know, what comes next and building you know, like infrastructures and building, you know, new systems and, and new, uh, you know, I, I don't think we're quite into like building power grids yet, you know, like uh, for, for people, because that's, I don't know if that's going to be necessary. I don't know. It, it's very interesting to see. We'll, we'll see how everything, things reconfigure, um, whether things break apart, whether political parties split, whether they redefine themselves, because that's kind of happening right now as well. There's, I, you know, I was talking earlier today in the other podcast I was on the, about uh, there. You know, I was talking to a Canadian, so it was kind of out of place. But there's a thing happening in America right now where you have the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, and one used to be the anti-corporate party. You know, like Democrats used to be the, the anti-corporate party who are and, and Republicans were like the 1980s greed party. Yeah. You know, and that's the way a lot of people have been accepted that frame and, and they've been working. And so a lot of people on the left or whatever think that they're all for like, you know, sustainability and all this stuff. And really, they just they support the biggest corporations now and they're supported by the biggest corporations. And uh, and the, the Republicans because they are, receive endorsements from them. Yeah, and, and so the uh, the Republicans are now at a point where they're kind of becoming this populist party, 
of small businesses and stuff. Whereas before in the eighties and nineties, they didn't give a shit about small businesses. You know, like that, that wasn't, that wasn't what they were about at all. Uh, you know, it was about wall street. And uh, now wall street is on, is part of the democratic party really. So, and that's a really new thing. And so there's just a big switch that's happening right now. So I don't know what that'll mean in the, in the future, you know? So it's, it, we're in definitely, definitely in a time of flux, but you know, it's interesting here about all these conversations because I'm sitting out here in Mormon land <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I talked to Tanner and, uh, you know, the Mormon church has like, I don't know, like a hundred billion dollars or something like that. And, uh, you go downtown and there's this giant, like closed, awesome building that like is their headquarters, not of the church, but of their offices, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and they have their own, like down the street from me here in this corporate park that I have my office in, there's Deseret manufacturing and, and Deseret books, book manufacturing printing. And, and, uh, and, and I was talking to Tanner about it and he's like, he's like, we have our own gas stations and gas trucks. <laughs> like they, they, they have some shit <laughs> figured out, you know, like they're kind of ready for this so, in a weird way. So are, do you think they're, so what you're saying is they're forming their own infrastructure. I mean, I'm saying they they already did. They already did. They yeah. already did. Yeah. I mean, they're, they I mean, all, all Mormons have always been preppers. They're, that that's part of their religion. Like they're, they, they're all supposed to have two years of food stored up. Uh, they, they've they've always been in that mindset because they did go to the war with the United States government once before. Yeah, that was about to say because right in the beginning yeah. they had they kind of fled and ran and they found their little their yeah. corner in Utah. So they they have a history of protecting themselves and getting ready. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know the the ins and outs of it. I've never studied Mormonism and I don't I know all the details or whatever. But I was talking to Tanner about it and he's like, "This what's happening right now is in accordance with prophecy." <laughs> he's like, he's like. We're in Zion right now. We have the mountains on either side of us. And when the rest of the world goes into civil war and bullshit, we're going to hang out here <laughs> is basically the idea. And uh, whether or not, that, who knows what's going to happen, whatever. Uh, but it was just kind of funny uh, to, to hear that from him and, and uh, talk about it. And, and uh, they, they've always been preparing for something bad to happen. And, and a lot of different groups do that, but like they're very big. You know, and so, you know, that's kind of interesting that that's sitting there just waiting for whatever that infrastructure. But they're also like, you know, there's also elements in that church even that are a little um, namby pamby and a little bit like, uh, <laughs> you know, slipping towards the left. I mean, uh, a big thing that a lot of people don't realize is like a lot of the the outer manosphere is Mormons uh, and because they, they had a. Uh, there's a perception kind of that their, their church was getting kind of weak on the inside, uh, in, especially as far as the men were concerned. And so I think that a lot of the manosphere, like Art of Manliness, that guy's Mormon. And uh, yeah, Brian Mickler from Order of Man, he's Mormon. And uh, like, so a lot of these big names in, in masculinity and, and talking about that who have been out in the forefront of it are actually Mormons. Can so you become a Mormon? Huh? What? Can you become a Mormon? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. You yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you There's can. Yeah, you can. That's why they that's why they're on missions all the time to bring people into their church. Oh yeah. 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 There's one thing I found out about Mormons, which I thought this was and it's no it's no Joe. Who did we just lose? JC. Oh, JC. JC. Okay. All right. Thanks, JC, for coming on, man. Appreciate your input is always valuable, buddy. You're welcome anytime. But um, and this is not a knock, but I heard about and and I don't know if you ever have you heard about magic underwear? Yeah, that's real. It is real. <laughs> yeah, they, have, they, they do have they have special undergarments. Yes, they do. Uh, I mean, in fact, in fact, I mean, it, it's a very diverse, weird group of people. I, I had uh, I mean, I, I mean, in a, in a cool way. I actually I love Mormons, as you can tell. I moved to Utah, yeah. but uh, I mean, I'm never going to be one. But like uh, you know, like I'm a friend of Mormons, and uh, and so uh, no, they they do have that. I don't know what the purpose of it is. I haven't ever looked into that. But no, it was it was kind of a joke. I had this reader come and have uh, uh, lunch with me. Right, he, he wanted to go out to lunch with me, and I was like, sure, I usually do that uh, if someone seems legit. And uh, I went and met him, and uh, he drops a whole bunch of bombs on me about like one beer in, uh, which was funny because he's Mormon. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so like, because uh, <laughs> so, he don't drink. So I know, right? And so he was like, so hey, so 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 uh, I'm a I'm a federal prosecutor, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, okay. And then you're like, shit, what did I say? You know? <laughs> and then and so he's like, I'm a federal prosecutor. <laughs> and then then he's like, then he's like, oh yeah, and I'm a Mormon. And he and he's like, and he lifts up a shirt. And he's like, see, magic underwear and everything. And because uh, <laughs> they have this kind of undershirt that goes under their shirt, yeah. And I... and, and then then he also pulled up his sleeve. He's like, but he's also a Mason, and uh, so he's a Freemason. And then he uh, had a he he. Then he was like, he was having a beer, and he's like, he's like, yeah, we're not supposed to drink, but you know what? Joseph Smith drank, and uh, <laughs> he's like, Joseph Smith like beer, and I do too. Occasionally, I just keep it quiet. Uh, you know, but uh, so he, he was. Sounds, he sounds like Illuminati to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was a really cool guy. I really like him. Uh, you know, but uh, it was just kind of uh, funny. So, like, it's been a very, like I said, uh, diverse and interesting group of people. Uh, they're a lot cooler than I think a lot of people think they are. But uh, and and there's also something actually uh, out here. I didn't I didn't know about it until I moved out here. But they call them Jack Mormons. And it's basically, there's a bunch of people who are like, you know, they're basically like, you know how Christians are Christians, but like, they don't really care about being Christian. And there's a lot of like Mormon, they're like, you know, they're Mormon, but you know, like just kind of in name only it, just for yeah. the networking like, benefits and whatever, you know, like born into it kind of thing. Yeah. Or? They're born into it. They don't really give a shit. They're like, you know, like they go sometimes, they don't really care about it. They, you know, maybe have a drink on the side, maybe do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that. And nobody knows, you know, like it, it's kind of a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a thing out here. It's that's the big thing I have for them. The, I think the question to ask them is: Are they wearing magic underwear? Well, I know that's the that's the thing. Is like, are they? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, the biggest. Yeah. Question. yeah. But um, yeah, I found out about that recently. I'm like, what the hell is magic underwear? Yeah, and, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. I actually told Anthony Johnson about. It. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, just Google it. And he's yeah. like, I said, I'm not joking. It's it's actually called that, so I think it's a religious thing. Yeah, so. no, it is. It, it's it's part of their thing. Yeah, I like I said, I haven't I haven't really even looked it up. I just I've been aware of it for a while. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Now that you're living in Utah, do you wear magic underwear? No, I do not. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I think my biggest question about it is what makes it magic. I mean, that's a pretty big word to put on. I, the I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe it was blessed by the elders. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it's like a holy water or something like that. I mean, think of the word water, then you add holy in front of it. Think of the word underwear, and you add magic in front of it. That really, you know, water is just water until it's holy water. Underwear. I don't know, maybe they're like fertility underwear because they do have a lot of kids. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Um, Greg, power, power suggestion. Oh, Greg's garage. Awesome. Good to see you, man. What about Mormon girls? They are wild. They are wild in Canada here. What about they have, that? They have a lot of very attractive women. Okay. That is not a lie. That, that, I, 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 I cannot speak to that. Uh, I haven't really been out and about in that way. But uh, they, uh, there are a lot of very attractive women. It's there are a lot of attractive people here. It's a nice place. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with Anthony's question before. I know he posted it before he left on his post board, but he's watching now. But Anthony asked the question, how can I? St how can you start a gang, Jack? So, oh, yeah, everybody always asks me that. It's like, I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, you could – I mean, it depends what you want. I mean, uh, I mean that, when I've said that in my books, I have said it in a very provocative way uh, because you do need a guiding of guys around you. Um, and you know who you know you are more attached to, and, and you can trust, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's the rough thing is is really finding those guys, and uh, it takes a long time. And uh, you know, it's kind of funny because I talk about this stuff, but I'm very uh, someone someone referred to me. I'm like Gandalf, you know, like I just like show up and like start some shit and make some stuff happen, and then I leave and go somewhere else and like whatever. That's <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I never really get to be part of anything. I'm just kind of. I, I'm. I'm a. I'm a start the world guy. I go over and start the world, and then do the next thing. Uh, so, that, um, and then I have, you have all these things. Like I have actually tonight. Oh, it's true. Uh, my land back in uh, Washington. They're actually 
my guys are having a ritual out there and doing stuff uh, tonight. So they're out uh, probably partying on my land right about now. Actually, it's only about 8 o'clock, so they're probably not even get, they're getting ready for ritual probably right about now. Uh, so, I mean, but I started that and I created that, and now they're, they're doing that, and that's cool. And actually, my buddy Clinton just uh, flew out. Clinton and Nathan uh, from that group just flew out for my book release party that I had here last week. Uh, yeah. So, in, fact, in fact, tell everybody about your book, your new book. Can't wait yeah, it's called Fire in the Dark. And uh, I mean, long story short, I guess, I'm trying to try to figure out the elevator pitch for it. Um, it's basically, if you've heard the book, uh, King, Magician, Warrior, Lover, uh, they talk about archetypes uh, for masculinity. And uh, that the problem with that book, I think, is that it's very uh, feminist framed. It comes from kind of a feminist psychologist and uh, or therapist, and it comes from that uh, kind of Jungian background. And so, it, there's a lot of, I think, softening of masculinity in that. And so what I did is really talk about masculine archetypes in a way that I think doesn't do that. And it, because when you talk about things from a, a more feminist frame, you talk about it from uh, in a way that uh, kind of downplays violence and the importance of violence as being part of masculinity. And, uh, and so this new book really talks about order and chaos and the fight between, you know, the struggle that men engage in to create order out of chaos. And it's kind of our ongoing job and it always has been. And so I think a lot of the God ideas that we've come up with over different cultures throughout history and the big archetypes that we've had for gods have been, you know, three kind of main things. And they have to do with creation and protection or championing and perpetuation and so it's like you create order you have this this father figure who creates order and makes the rules and the laws and and things and that and that's what every father does and that's part of all of our lives and if we if it doesn't matter for fathers or not we are you know, creating our own rules in our lives and, and meaning in our lives and so forth and uh and then once you create order and then, then you then it has to be protected uh uh, from you know entropy and also from you know outside forces corrupting it and so forth and uh, and uh, obviously from physical threats and that's kind of this warrior figure that we've always had in every religion so in in a lot of uh, mythological systems he's a storm god that, that comes with thunder and lightning uh, like Thor or Indra and and uh, you know Zeus is kind of a Zeus did the thunder and lightning thing and then he became king because he was a warrior first. And uh, George Washington actually did the same thing. I'm a big George Washington guy. And so I kind of worked that in the book too. Uh, and then uh, the third thing is, you know, you always have this kind of thing. You know, once you have uh, created life and, uh, and it's protected, uh, you need to perpetuate it. And so you always have these fertility gods and, and, and so forth. Uh, fertility gods and guys, gods who are really related to getting work done. And, uh, you know, because all, once you have something, you need to do all this work to keep it going. And that's what most of us do for most of our lives is we really we don't do the glorious hero thing all the time. And we don't do the creation work all the time. Most of the stuff we do every day is like, you know, yesterday I had to sit and do my taxes. Uh, you know, like I had to sit and do all the work to send to my account to send my taxes. That's not glorious. It's not creative. It's not anything. It's just shit that I have to do to get done. It, to make it in the world and that's always been true and so i think there you know there's a god who kind of encapsulates that that as well and it's kind of closer to the earth because it's more of earthly concerns and so that's what the book is basically it talks about these three different archetypes and the way that they relate to men and uh in, in a more positive masculine way than i think that maybe some other books have treated it in the past okay could that do that's cool i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to reading that one god that's going to be good. I know we got Speeder in the chat, and Speeder is a young dude from, he's been on here before, from Sweden, if I'm correct, Gonzo? Gonzo? Yeah, he's from Sweden. And let me tell you, man, he talked about the shit show that's going on there. Yeah, I know that. I mean, you know, we've had some guys from other countries just absolutely, like um, Emmanuel was on from, from um, Ireland. Ireland, and what a shit show. Oh, the UK is fucked. 
I mean, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yeah. when I hear these guys' stories and what they tell me, it's just mind blowing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, man. I, I'd love to. I, I wish that they, it, it's so weird. It's like they, they are the canaries in the coal mine, especially UK. Like uh, they're the canaries in the coal mine. Like, like somebody listen to what happens. Like <laughs> that's, that's what they're dealing with right there. Like I, I have dudes on my Instagram be like from, from the UK and stuff being like, it's not that bad here. They let us out for once a day, for one hour a day. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, are you insane? Like, 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 like what is wrong with you, dude? Like, like they let me out for one hour a day. Jeez. It's yeah. exactly like what I said today. Like, really? I have to really promote or advocate freedom? Seriously? I mean, yeah. you got to be crazy not to want that. That's insane. And what I, my, my fear is like, right, what's happened, this, this situation, it didn't destroy these, these situations or, or, or governments. It's the governments themselves. And my fear is like the tentacles of a global communism is spreading because they're taking total control of everything and telling you what you can do, what you can't do. And I'm like, when are the men, when are the people going to stand up and say, that's enough, enough? Let yeah, yeah, I know. And, and in what way? I mean, they're doing a great job of preventing that from happening because maybe it already would have, honestly. I mean, but like, uh, I mean, how would they get together? Yeah. You know, like how would, I mean, that's part of the deal, right? I mean, how would they get, how would they organize? Uh, they're being watched on social media and they, you know, like what are the, yeah, there, there is no secure platform. And I think the ones who, I think the ones who are doing well are those, those ones who are far and few between like Ian in New Jersey with the gym and the barber in, in, in Texas, the ones who refuse to shut, shut down, get arrested and then they get out. Get the fines. Yeah. And I think if more people who had businesses actually just said, you know what? Screw you. Screw you. I'm going to make my living. You know, I think if just people, maybe not just getting together, but stood up, stood their ground and said, I'm not budging. This is the hill I'm going to die on. This is, you're yeah. taking my livelihood anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you gotta, I, I, every, like I said, everybody has their own. Everybody. Oh, we lost you, Jack. Can everybody hear? Okay. I can hear you, Tony. Jack, we lost. Sorry, your Jack. Mic. Your mic is off. He might have flexed his neck and it pulled the mic out. Is it back now? There yep. you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah. I hit it with my foot. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, I had Ian on my podcast and. Uh, you know, I do think that he's a guy who's doing that. What people should do, and but um, it does help if you have some people around you, because that that's the real struggle. Is that like you know, like five business owners on a block doing the same thing is a real problem. One of them, maybe not so much. You know, like, like that's that's the that's the tricky part. It's uh, the same thing. Is like you know. You know, because I don't, I don't fight the mass thing as far as like just because I run errands. I'm a grown up and I have things to do. I don't have time to argue with people like 300 times a day. Uh, you know, like so uh, we have it in the county and yeah, you know, like that we're in. Well, I mean, in the state for the next Utah is going to lift it in, in April. Uh, but uh, you know, and most people are done with it, whatever. And so sometimes you'll see people aren't wearing them and be like, oh, nobody's wearing one that in that uh, convenience store today, so I'm not wearing one either. And, uh, but you know, if you're the only one, then it's like, you're, you're going to be the one who creates the conflict today. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to deal with that right now. So, uh, but you know, it's like, I pay for a gym that I go to that, uh, hasn't used them at all ever. And, uh, you know, so I don't even go to that gym anymore. I just keep paying them because I think it's awesome that they're doing it, Uh huh. you know, and, uh, but, but Utah has been really lax about it. Your volume. You kicked it with your foot again. <laughs> I heard him say, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. I'll just put That's it up right. here now. Uh, yeah, I, I keep step, stepping on it. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I mean, I, there, you, I think the danger out here is that Utah has been so lax. I mean, so uh, not harsh about the restrictions. I mean, they only closed down for like three weeks, like way back in the day. And all the businesses are open. People are opening restaurants. Things are being built. It's like the economy is good. Everything's great. 
And so if people here are a little bit complacent to the point where like, we just have the mask. It's not a big deal. You know, like, whereas other people have been not able to work for like half the fucking year. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, uh, it's, it, things have been different levels of crazy at different places. Yeah. I mean, l let me, let me ask you a question. You talk about the masks and things like that. People talk about compliance. I don't, um, I, we're in Florida. So the compliance thing really, to me, hasn't been an issue. I mean, yeah, um, yeah you're in, you're, you're in freedom land. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just crazy. But what, what do you say to somebody like when I had, you know, Ivan's been on here a few times and I had a great conversation with him here on my channel here a few months ago. And he had said, like, who's going to be the first? We talk about people like doing something, but who's going to be the first? Yeah. Who, who's going to be the one? You know, it's kind of like when I say who's going to be the first, it reminds me of the girl who when she stepped through that window in the Capitol, she was the first and they shot her and killed her. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what somebody is going to have to face. You know what I mean? I mean, well, and, yeah. And that's the reality of it. I've had that discussion with tons of people is that the problem is that like, we know what's going to happen to that person. And it's not that they're going to die. Even it's that, that um, they're going to basically destroy their entire reputation and their lives and all their families. And, and that's, I think that a lot of people are aware of that. Uh, more people, I mean, to, to their credit, because I think a lot of people were actually being smarter than I would expect, really, because I've known a lot of crazy people who seem like they, they should have gone off a long time ago, you know, and I'm kind of amazed that they haven't been the one. But I think that as long as it's just the one, like the first one, um, it's manageable. It needs to be a lot. It needs to be, it can't just be one. It needs to be like a lot. And, and that's, that's the thing. It, and, and it has to be for a good reason at, at the right time. And like, I mean, the capital thing, you know, like I'm not, a, I mean, that was sloppy, <laughs> you know, like it wasn't, if, if you were trying to do something, that wasn't it, mm -hmm. you know? And I think actually that's just going to make people more hesitant to do anything because it was such a, failure um you know it became it became a circus and a clown show and uh i i respect the you know the interest in doing something um but you know there's a lot of things that i think people want to be part of something that's successful <laughs> and i think that you know like and 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 better organized than that you know i mean i look at i look at the the fence around the capitol now and i look back to what happened yeah that, that day and what I what I look back is I don't I don't look back at the pictures of the people that that went inside the Capitol. I look at the pictures of our leaders cowering behind chairs with plastic bags over their head running down the hallway, taking a picture for social media with this scared look on her face. I say to myself, these are our leaders. Right. Our founding fathers would be rolling in their graves right now. Right. We have a fence around our capital. Right. We look like the biggest pussies in the world because we have a fence around our capital that we do not need. To me, this is amazing. I'm embarrassed for our country to see a fence around our capital building that our leaders are so afraid. Our, 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 our founding forefathers would have been there with their muskets and whatever they had, their swords, and defending themselves. Not taking a picture with a plastic bag on your head for Instagram, for your Twitter, looking scared, running down the hallway, people hiding behind chairs. It was amazing to me that the people, these are our leaders, and they're cowering like, like, like cowards. I mean, well, I mean, it's it's a it's a bunch of women and, and sleazy dudes who've just taken money from people all their lives. What do, yeah. what do you expect? You know, like I mean, it's not like they're they, it's not like a class of heroic warriors. It, it, they're not like warrior kings. They, they're uh, they're just sleazy people who take money. They take bribes from people. I mean, that's it, why why would you expect them to do anything else? It's just uh, you know, like uh, yeah, they, they're it's it, it's 
and, and and really, I mean, that seems like so much theater anyway now because it's like that was so politically useful for them. It's like, did they know that at the time? You know, like you know, because they've just used that to to uh, silence their enemies. Yeah. So it's like, were they even really scared? You know, or was it like all an act? Yeah. You know, like because it's not like they don't act for a living. I mean, they're liars who lie for a living. So like, what? Why would that be surprising? You know. It's it's it, it yeah, but is it like I totally agree with you. It's disgusting to watch. Uh, yeah, they're despicable human beings. But uh, you know, it's it, you know. Uh, on the other hand, like what else would you expect from them? It it makes me sad for our country because oh, yeah. I mean, a fence around the capital that's been there for months now, and and I understand that it's a political ploy to yeah. say, oh my God, people could attack at any moment. And we don't want to be attacked while we're governing our country, and that's horseshit. It's oh, yeah. Bullshit. Well, they just want to create. Uh, I, yeah, I just I don't think they're worried about being attacked so much as they want to create the idea that they could be, uh, and, and they and they want to create the uh, and yeah the, that so they can rile Americans up. And, I mean, obviously the the thing since then has been like calling people insurrectionists. And uh, like you know, insurrectionists, yeah. and which is weird because all these people have spent half their careers burning flags. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, like you know, the people who they support are, are like flag burners who say I hate America and have always have always said that. But uh, you know, now they're you know they're worried about ins the same people who are like saying you insurrectionist, you know, and, and shit like that. And it's it's just comical. There, that's unbelievable hypocrisy. Isn't that what dictatorships do? The people turn on the government, they barricade themselves in their castles or yeah. palaces. Well, I was thinking it's pretty convenient that they have to have their masks, you know, like it's like they're like the police hiding from the cartels in Mexico or something, you know, like they're like they're hiding their I, or maybe they just have, I, I, I know that they don't have any self-respect, so I don't believe this, but uh, I like to think that they wear their masks so that the founders won't see what they're doing. <laughs> like, like they will they have to hide their faces while they while they they sit you know i want to melt welcome uh gene primal man how you doing tonight buddy glad you could make it man oh very good yeah good, I good. Jump on. yeah jack is a special guest tonight surprise i sent him a link almost every week and uh i'm glad he's on here tonight i love the background too by the way it's dude you got the I think you get, you definitely got the best camera and the best setup here. So well, yeah, I got that's why I said that's why I jumped on because I had the I had the cameras and everything set up. I have to yeah. turn this all down when the dudes come over to roll tomorrow. But uh, it's a uh, yeah, this is this is the set. This is going to make my, my job for the next few months. That I have a book out. You know, I want to I want to give a special invite too to Speeder in in Sweden. So Speeder, I know you're a, you're a um a I'll say a fan of uh, Jack Donovan's, but you're welcome to come on. Because we know you, I know you have an avatar. Because I'm tonight was no avatar night. There was some people in the backstage earlier, and I just booted you because we've had a lot of trolls over the past uh, couple weeks. So if somebody wants to show their face, you're welcome, Speeder. We know you, so if you want to come on with an avatar and talk with Jack, you are welcome. Um, again, Speeder, like just some of the different people we've had on from different countries at night and telling us their stories is just absolutely mind blowing to me. When they tell me their stories, it makes me think how good we have it in the United States again. So when people say we're living in, in and we are living in tough times here. So, um, but. It, it's I'm, only, oh good, sorry, I'm being That's there. right, the, the other countries, especially Ireland, yeah. the things that, that Emmanuel was telling us, and then when Speeder talked to us about Sweden, about the mass immigration and just the absolute mess that's going on there is is just absolutely incredible to me. Mm -hmm. It just it just blows my mind, you know? So we live in a, I, I wanna say, and I do wanna think we still live in a great country, but I just don't see, I don't, under the, the current predicament we're in, I don't just don't see it lasting. I don't see any longevity in this mess that we're living in. I just don't. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not here as a, you know, I don't want people to think I'm a nihilist. I want to call myself a realist. I like to think that there's hope for the future, you know. Um, 
I mean, you know, one of my good buddies is is uh, Ivan Throne, and you know, me and Ivan have gone down some deep rabbit holes and you know, private discussions, sitting and talking for hours. Um, and I just, it's like you have to prepare. You have to prepare for really for the worst. And I hate to say that to people, but if you're not preparing for the worst now, I, what else can you do? I mean, I want to give people a, a message of hope and, and promise and, and things like that. But what you had said earlier, like maybe the time has passed and that's reality. Maybe the time has passed. It's too late. And that is such a, it's such a, like you said, you don't want to be black pilled about this. Yeah. I mean, I would say, let's not say it's time. To, it, like there's, let's wait till we're the UK until we say the word time has passed. You know, like I think the reason why America still, which is why it's gun control week. Uh, I mean, the reason why the only reason why we don't have the lockdowns that they have in uh, the UK is because of guns. Uh, that is the only reason. Uh, they're still a little bit afraid of us. And once they're not afraid of us anymore, then it goes, all, all that goes away. And when people don't understand that, I, 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 that, again, that's not, that's a person I can't have a conversation with anymore. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, that, governments need to be a little bit scared of their people. I think and, more people uh, own guns now than any, any time in the history of this country, probably. Yeah. Not percentage wise, but not percentage yeah. wise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, after this freeze, I forgot to mention this. At, right after this freeze, as soon as the stores opened, I, I went and I checked the sporting goods and the gun the gun cabinets were empty again. So this mm -hmm. is like now the uh, I don't know how many times it's been this year that I've seen the gun cabinets empty, but they are just selling out. So people people know people know that they need them. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to see it. up north. Less and less people have guns. There's an attack on masculinity. I was wanted to ask Jack, how do you feel about it? Because look, look at the most popular gym chain now. Planet Fitness, which if you act masculine at all, throw you out. What the hell is the point of a gym if you can't grunt once in a blue hell? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that's that's a gym for people who aren't serious about working out. I think everybody knows that. You know, <laughs> you know like that's hey, you know, like that's that's for the people who are like, you know, I should really work out. And then and, and that and then they go and they they sign up and they don't they have pizza Fridays. I mean, it's the kind of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like something like that. I think they give you pizza while you work. It's the, the, it's not a real gym. Uh, you know, I mean, I think my parents go there or something. I don't know. Like, uh, uh, I think the guy I live with goes there too, and he, you know, because he goes into the cardio like twice a week. You know, like that's what it's for. You know, it's not for anybody who's he, serious. He goes over three miles I mean, an hour on a treadmill. To throw him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I and even those, I think a lot of them, like anything, there's the public image, and then like they're really probably. Uh, just a lot of people not being paid a lot of money to watch them, so no one really gives a shit. You know, like I, I doubt. I think there's a lot of like, you know, a lot of people work out. I know a lot of people who do work out of Planet Fitness or whatever because it's the closest thing to their house or something, and then they they're fine and they're like gym bros. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I would never do that. I would never go there just because of their general fame. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's yeah. I mean, that the whole world is kind of being made cute and and. Uh, effeminate so i mean it's not not a surprise i'm gonna bring speed around here because he's he's definitely a fan of yours he's from sweden he's 18 okay. years old speeder can we yeah. hear you buddy hello hello hey, tony anthony's been asking a lot of questions and he's like losing his mind in the chat um i have no idea what anthony's asking I, we answered his question about the um about the gang yeah anthony you can start a gang in masculine so you have our permission. So Speeder, go ahead. Welcome, buddy. How you doing? Oh, thank you. Well, I'm doing great. It's a uh, night here in Sweden. Uh, it's about 5 a.m. Oh, wow. Good morning. Yeah. So good it's morning. good morning or good night, yeah. <laughs> however you want. <laughs> yeah. So you're familiar with Jack Donovan for sure, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I like think Black Sun in the background there. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for him? Sure, go for it. Uh, can't think of any. <laughs> I, th I think he knows all the stuff. We, cut, we caught you off guard, didn't we? 
So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? Give us a rundown of what's going on in Sweden to let, just to kind of prep Jack on what's happening there. Oh, well, uh, long uh, history short. Um, since the 1970s, 1980s, we have had mass um, immigration. Uh, and uh, we are currently at uh, 2.5 or more million uh, foreign foreigners. Uh, so, uh, and uh, with this uh, coronavirus thing in Sweden, uh, there's there's no lockdowns, uh, but but there are some uh, so-called restrictions, uh, uh, like uh, two meters or what is it, six feet rule or something, and. Uh, yeah, um, most government personnel are uh, wearing uh, masks. Uh, lots of businesses have shut down. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not good in that way. But I mean, uh, well, let let's talk about your immigration issues because that's what you talked about last time and what it's doing to your country. <laughs> yeah, it's devastating. Mm -hmm. What well, what well, basically? Um, uh, Swedes are getting murdered, raped, uh, humiliated at schools. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's all the symptoms you can think of. Robbed, uh, lots of robberies. There are us going up, and uh, we 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 have a lots of uh, traitors in government, and uh, yeah, everywhere. And uh, now, now a recent study had came out and they said that, uh, well, the rapes are going up because uh, the girls are more attempting now or they, they feel like it's more okay to file a police report against someone who is not a Swede. So, so they have most retarded uh, reasons, the most idiotic uh, reasons to, to, to get away from the real issue. And who are your, who are the people immigrating to Sweden? Uh, they are from the Middle East and uh, Africa. So, uh, yeah, lots of Afghans uh, and uh, lots of Somalis. Uh, the, mo the most people who are raped the most are uh, the Somalis and uh, Afghans right now. So, yeah. <laughs> This is it's like in America, the the what is death by statistic statistic uh, with rapes when it comes to uh, the disappropriate uh, numbers that that uh, we have a small percentage of some people of Group B and they rape the like the host population like ninety to ten percent. It's uh, yeah, it's dark. But I mean, it's like we said before, don't, don't, don't get black pilled. Just if, if you have families, don't, don't let your uh, daughters go out and party too much or don't, and don't let them bring out a stranger. So to say, so I mean, it's it be, be a father. It was very good, very good. Sum, summed up there. Well, one one thing I've noticed by doing this stream for months here now is that when we get, I always notice that when we get younger guys from different countries, Jack, and I don't know, I mean, you've done a lot of travel. And I think everybody, I think Gonzo and, you know, Gonzo is 22 years old, Speeder's 18. The, the conversation from these younger guys in different countries I don't want to knock the United States, but it's so much more intelligent at an 18 year old, 18 years old, than guys, 18 year old, 18 year olds in our country. You mm -hmm. follow what I'm saying? They're more involved in what's going on and care more about their country than yeah. 18 year olds in the United States. Yep. I mean, we've noticed that guys on the panel, right? Yep. So, well, so I mean, would you say that's a sampling? Bias, though, to a certain extent. I mean, well, like, what do you mean, as far as? Well, because I mean, uh, I mean, I've I've spoken in Europe and and uh, at, at some uh, 
new right kind of events uh, of, of dudes who are very worried about immigration and, and, uh, and, and all that. And, uh, and, and there, there's definitely that, that group of people in, in Europe, but they're not actually the majority because the majority of people are, as we said in America, uh, you know, like the majority of the people are just going along with it and defending it. Whereas like, I think they obviously, so, you know, the guys who were talking to are concerned about it are a very specific group of people, I think, you know, and, and so they are, they're, they're very informed about the issue and they're very passionate about it and whatever. I mean, uh, I mean, from like Sweden, obviously, and I'm sure you know who he is, Peter. Um, I mean, there's, you know, uh, the, the golden one. Yeah, Marcus Foley. Yeah, I have <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, he's he's kind of a leader in that kind of area over there. I, I think yeah. of that 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 kind post of post physique. Yeah, 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 post physique, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I've talked to him a couple times over the years on online and stuff, and he's reviewed my books and stuff. And yeah, uh, Marcus and and yeah, I definitely have a bunch of guys over there who read my books. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I. I I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, I, I, I think there is a, the mainstream of the population isn't that um, awake to what's going on. Is that true? I think uh, most of the people uh, knows what's going on. It's just that uh, they don't want to wake up to it. Right. Yeah, it, it, they know what's going on, but they don't want to see it. Yeah, and that's the same here. I mean, obviously, like yeah. we just said, like with the government, Everybody knows that they're lying to our faces, but most yeah. people, are, it's much more comfortable for people to just yeah. not deal with it. It's what yeah. they call the the quiet majority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'm being biased then because I'm finding that people are are speaking up here. Like I'm getting, I noticed that just the whenever we get somebody from a different country on here. I'm surprised at their enthusiasm, especially when we get younger guys on here. It just kind of, it, it like sparks me. Like, why am I, why am I not seeing that in my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Why am I just seeing, you know, them just walking down the road? I'm sure just what's, what is it? TikTok, you know, making their TikTok videos and, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, at, 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 at 18 years old, you're a man. I mean, it's about time. I mean, if you vote, you should be able to get involved in your government. And, you know, I just I, I don't understand the whole thought process now. So, again, maybe I'm I'm biased on who we've had on here because I've been amazed because I don't talk to too many young guys, except somebody like Gonzo or Paul Galvin, who comes on here, who have any type of intelligence when it comes to or even give a shit about what's going on in their country, let alone talk about it to actually give a shit i feel like i feel like the american youth is more into trends and the mainstream bullshit as opposed to uh european young the youth i mean that just could be just could be me maybe speeder can uh elaborate on that but i feel like um, the american youth is more into the trends and the garbage that they feed them yeah yeah i i, yeah, I, I agree um uh, and there's nothing more to say there but, but i mean america is the biggest country so to say and uh, has has more media outlets and uh, mm -hmm. yeah they, they are like the host population of uh of uh can you it's... say brainwashing your um, youth with a lot of uh entertainment yeah too much that's, entertainment yeah. that's exactly what i'm talking about yep what sweeter speeder in Sweden? What is your what does your mainstream, your mainstream media promote there? Like when you see the United States, what what does main your mainstream media promote there? The same as ours? Mm, it's hard to say because I don't uh, read the media too much. <laughs> good um, answer. Uh, good. I, I mean. Uh, Always probably the same bullshit, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's more of the, them trying to cover up stuff. They they want to report uh, report 
good stuff about immigration or uh, n- never the negative stuff e- even if it comes out uh, reports of uh, who the rapists are like th- that's one report in uh, thousands mm-hmm. it, it's always always uh, the p- most positive uh, things about uh, the bad problems mm-hmm. yeah I could definitely see that so from my perspective in Sweden what is going on right now is that Firstly, we we will not solve any issue through the parliament or the government. They will not solve anything. We, we I think Swedes who are serious about this uh, knows that uh, government will not solve it, and uh, we will just wait till the state implodes, like like they they will uh, uh, fall themselves, and then then we we we're just like. Uh, organizing together uh, with like-minded people. Uh, th- th- that's what you got to do. We have, uh, there, there's an organization in, in Sweden called the Free Sweden, translated. Um, and they, they have like a house, House of the Swedes in, in, a, in a specific uh, town. And uh, I, I'm in that. I, I am in that organization, for example. And the, and the it's really nice because you don't have to think that oh I gotta do this and this. It's more of a gather around with the Swedes, like-minded Swedes. That that's what we're doing, and that's the only thing you can do. And prepare for uh, be be being a survivalist state. Um, have the thought that uh, tomorrow uh, the electricity could go out or uh, the government could fall or a- anything. And then you gotta know what to do. You know what helps when you have issues like that where you really can't come out? You know, the, like like you said earlier, the silent majority, but truly being silent. Because once you get a leader, all of a sudden your message changes. You've seen it everywhere. Yeah. Once you form a group, all of a sudden your message starts to expand, and then slowly it starts to shift left or right, and the original yes. message gets overlapped. Yes. Uh, the trick is to, be, is to be silent and get the whole group to be silent. Like not have an open party and just vote consistently with who you who follows your beliefs. Where they can't do polls and then pander to you guys. Like what happened with Trump? There was a huge silent majority. It was angry. He didn't reply to polls. Trump was killing whatever the polls told him. You just you need this you need the angry silent majority. When they need you to come out and vote, you guys just turn turn them upside down. Stop giving businesses to whoever panders to them. It's like look what happened to Gillette. Gillette lost billions of dollars because they screwed men over, and men answered with their wallets. Now look at Disney. Disney canceled Junior Carano. Guess how many Disney Plus subscriptions went down? <laughs> you know, I'm being serious. When people, yeah. businesses, and, and politicians do stuff for their wallets. Every senator needs their contributions because they can't run for re-election without money. People need to speak with their votes and their wallets yeah. quietly. Yeah, exactly. That's more effective than them rounding you guys up and shaming you and ripping you apart. But this is my opinion. Yeah. Because too many people have a lot to lose by speaking up, fortunately. Yeah, 100%. You know, I... I have to say, it sucks because Gillette made the best head shaving razors. <laughs> <laughs> and I cut my head all the time now because I won't buy Gillette razors. <laughs> oh, that's funny because I actually get my razors at the dollar store and I check just because at Dollar General and I get them for, they're about eight of them for five bucks. Yeah. Um, and it's an incredible razor. It really is. Really? But I think they use Harry's. Harry's yeah. is awesome. Okay. I think they're made by Gillette. No. No. I don't That's know. The trick is like you don't know who Gillette's really making. And so, like, yeah. I, I mean, I, st- I just buy the chic ones. I don't know if they're the other ones, but Gillette yeah. had the ones that turn really good and they're like, they get all the angles. But, like, uh, they, you know, I'm still mad at Gillette. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not buying those. I will buy believe- Gillette. I believe Schick was uh, in business before Gillette. Yeah. Oh, good. 
I think Gillette came after them to compete with with Sheik, Sheik or Sheik or however you say it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I get, I get, like I, I've told people on my head shave videos, is I get them from Dollar General. It's a cheap razor. It's a triple edge razor. It's got a pivot head. It's it's fantastic. But I looked, checked that it's not made by Gillette. Nice. So, but you know, there's I think there's eight of them for five bucks. How can you beat that? No, no. And one last in my outdoor shower. Realistically, one last about I shave my head every day and my face. So one lasts probably over two weeks, just one. So it's a pretty good deal for five bucks. So. Yeah, I haven't bought a razor in almost 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had dreads too, like uh not that long ago. So yeah. They they made a brand called the Halftime Razor, which was American made. It had two razors on each side. Yeah, you go like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember those. Yeah. I rarely got cut. They stopped making it. I don't see it on Amazon. And mm. if you go to, um, oh geez, what's his channel again? Um, oh, how can I not forget it? He's been on here before. Thirty Day Reviews. Mm -hmm. Go go see Justin on Thirty Day Reviews, and he's got all sorts of razors. I've tried all the gimmicks. You know, we know we're discounting a lot of guys that don't shave their head right now, but there are three of us that do. So, but I've tried those. I've tried that head blade and I can tell you, I pretty much, I, I remember that um, when I tried, first tried the head blade and this was a few years ago when I went to, I, I jacked my head up so bad with that thing that all I did was bleed all over everybody's gi the first, the first night after I jacked my head up. So. Um, so I'm just back to a regular razor. So, and if anybody shaves their head, you want to know, my last video was on how to shave your head fast. So that was a few months ago, real quick, real easy, real simple. So, but, uh, I have no idea how we got onto head shaving, but I think it was the Gillette thing. Yeah. Peter, do you shave your yeah, head? Yeah. <laughs> and do I shave my head uh, yeah. right now? No. Okay. And if I'm shaving my face, I'm doing it with an electric razor. <laughs> Okay, cool. Good, good. So let me see here. It says, hi, was schizophrenic banned? I meant timed out. Ooh. Um, um, there's a good possibility he was. Um, so <laughs> anyways, um, but um, so let, let's get back. Um, you know what? It's, uh, it's Saturday night. Get it off your chest. And Speeder uh, actually... Primal Man is our newest member so for tonight. So we're going to ask you, do you want to get anything off your chest? So. No, I'm just listening tonight. You're just listening. Okay. Yeah, more, more than anything, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go to Gonzo. Do I have anything to get off my, get off my chest tonight? Oh, you know what we need to do, Gonzo? It's time for Gonzo News. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's yeah, Gonzo Jack, news. I, I'd like you to stay for Gonzo News because it's time. All right. Yeah, this is it. You guys ready? Here we go. Let's yeah, do I'm it. Pulling up the news here. Okay. One, two, three. Let's do it. Coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas, Gonzo News. There it is. Gonzo is going to bring us the latest, greatest news from around the world and the country and possibly stuff. He got me good here a few times with stuff from like The Onion and Babylon B. So um, I think you'll have to quote your news sources as usual so we know where it's coming from. So let's yes. start with the top story. Yes, it's currently loading. Um, but we're, we're going to assume that Joe Biden did something bad. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's the first <laughs> order of news. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. This is, this is perfect. Uh, we'll start off with this one. So uh, this is a, this comes from, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm having a little bit of issues here. Let me see if I can fix this. Okay. 
so this this comes uh this comes from austin texas actually a progressive is surprised to learn he can still wear a mask even without the government forcing him to <laughs> um Austin, Texas, as Texas removed its mask mandate last week, many progressives were shocked to learn that they could still wear masks, having been led to believe that the end of the mask mandate would mean all masks everywhere would disappear, like all those people in Infinity War. He was surprised to find that his mask hadn't yet been dusted from existence. It's so weird. I can still wear two, three, or even four masks at once. Bizarre, said Austin progressive activist Frank Miles as the sun rose and his mask was still firmly in place on his face, exactly as it had been all night. I don't know what to think about this. Sometimes I just sit around and wait for a notification to pop up on my phone when the latest government advisory on how many masks I should wear, if I should get the vaccine, and whether I should wear pants. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is from the Babylon Bee. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So, if anybody it's, doesn't know, the Babylon Bee is a what would you call it, a satire news agency? Yeah. Yeah. They're like the Onion. Okay. I, I feel like that was pretty realistic, though. It, 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 yeah, exactly. that one was a little close. <laughs> close to home. People are doing that seriously. <laughs> um. I mean, I don't know about you guys recently, but uh, I've been seeing a lot of a lot of folks recently have been getting the jab. Um, my grandparents and my mom and my I think my dad is considering getting the jab. So so far, everybody's everybody's been jabbed uh, in my family. So we'll just see how that goes. Anybody on this panel been jabbed? Not yet, no. but I probably am being strongly advised to me right. by my doctors for some reason because I'm a cancer survivor. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so let's see here. Mississippi governor signs a bill prohibiting boys in girls' sports. Girls deserve a level playing field. So there's, some, there's some good news. Some good news this week. Yeah, that that uh, whole thing is freaking me out, but I think that's really backfired on them. So, you know, who was talking about it on the last stream? Somebody said I did. I was the transy. The trandies are cracking skulls in MMA. Yeah, yeah. It's one lady's broke five skulls. No, no, cracked five skulls and hospitalized five women in her first five fights. Wow. I love it. I actually love it. It makes MMA women's fighting exciting again. <laughs> I never liked that there was women's fighting anyway, so yeah. I'm actually neutral on that. I, I, if they destroy that part of the sport, I kind of I'm kind of cool with it. But yeah. <laughs> they, there's a rugby, a transgender rugby player in Europe. I don't know if Speeders heard of this. He, she, whatever they goddamn call it, has destroyed every record. And this person couldn't make the men's team. Right, gave up. And then he's just crushing every women's record. It is, it is very enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Never heard of it, but uh, uh, I mean, the, the good thing about it and the clowny thing is about it is that uh, they destroy their own sports with all the political correctness. Like they they implode. That's what I'm telling <laughs> you. They are imploding. You don't even have to say anything. The less you say, the better. <laughs> it's like yeah. more than that. Uh, you can just watch the shit show and they, they will, yeah, they will implode. I'm waiting for Serena Williams to get overpowered by someone <laughs> very shortly. That would be amazing. Serena sure? Williams is like way overpowered. It'd be you great. sure she's even a woman to begin with? I, I, that, it is questionable. Yeah. Her sister is so much different. That's what, yeah, yeah. that's what's shocking. There, there are some manly women, but like, I mean, what's to stop Mr. T from having like, tr like, you know, like, like Mr. T's just gonna like, uh, you know, change, and then, uh, then he can go, uh, you know, play tennis against three women. <laughs> I'm pretty the fool. Yeah. <laughs> now, who is um, who's Serena and Venus? Is it Venus? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. Serena and Venus. Who is their father? Isn't he a famous guy? No, he's a nut job. He's like, you know, like a Woods dad, you know, the one that, you know, okay. pushed them at a young age to become athletes. Okay. Well, Tiger Woods isn't doing any news on Tiger Woods, Gonzo. Tiger Woods, I haven't I haven't seen him pop up in a while. Well, the car he, crash. Except for the car crash, you heard about that, right, Gonzo? No, no. Oh, wow. I, that, yeah. one, that, that just shows you how how little news I get. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. Anybody want to tell what happened with Tiger? He, he was speeding. Him. Went off the road, and the jaws of life had to be extracted to get him out. He had multiple surgeries, broke his, his knee, it broke his kneecap and his shin. Yeah, good shape, man. This was not even what two weeks ago, I'd say. About two, about weeks. two weeks ago. Yeah. So. All right. It's fun if he gets if he's too injured, he can just join the women's division. If I was a woman. There you go. I didn't even yeah. think about that. <laughs> we have a solution. Tigress, Tigress Woods. Tigress Woods. Tigress yeah. Woods destroys all female golf records. <laughs> yeah, well, he gets the he gets the tee off at the woman's tee, I believe. So he'd be Times Woman of the Year, being so brave, like Caitlyn Jenner was. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> True empowerment. True empowerment. I've got a. This is an unfortunate one here, but uh, we see this happen from time to time. A Canadian father is facing prison for not cooperating with teenage daughters transition to male by school and a gender clinic. Um, the Canadian say, government. Huh? Say that one more time. Yeah. So a, a Canadian father is facing prison for not cooperating with a teenage daughter's transition to male by school and gender clinic. So uh, this uh, this young woman is transitioning from, I guess, from female to male. And now he's, now he's basically uh, going to go to prison for standing up for what's right here. It seems let's uh, let's see here. The story says, Few of us understand. Let's see here. Okay. The government of Canada has decided that if a parent does not cooperate with his minor child's decision to have a sex change operation, he will face criminal punishment, including prison time. Uh, As we reported back in February 2020, Rob Hoogland of Surrey, British Columbia, is living that horror story. The courts there have ruled that his 14-year-old daughter who believes she is transgender thanks to school propaganda can be given medical procedures to change her gender uh, despite her father's fierce objections. These procedures include puberty blockers, opposite sex hormones likely followed by surgical procedures. According to the Gender Clinic Hospital's own consent form, which the father refused to sign, these drugs are experimental and will cause sterility, and other dangerous side effects such as unhealthy bone growth, and the effects are irreversible. But the judges and other government officials are ignoring those dangers. Moreover, the court has ordered that Rob may not discuss publicly any details about what is happening to his daughter. In addition, the court has ordered that he may not refer to his daughter by her actual female name. He must refer to her as Quinn and as he or him but Rob has refused to abide by the draconian gag order and he has been interviewed in various conservative media and his name, Oh, and has named the hideous doctors at the gender clinic. LGBT lawyers, judges, government officials, police officials, and others who have contributed to this destruction of his daughter's body and mass resistance has supported him throughout most of this ordeal. So this is, this news comes from mass resistance, but. And what is mass resistance? Um, this, yeah, this is a, yeah, it looks like a, an activist site here covering a lot of, a lot of issues like this. I'm not terribly familiar with them, but I know I've seen this story come up before, but I was wondering what had happened to this guy, but there we go. There's the news. He's, he's facing prison. I'd like to know what's up with the consent form. Like what's the purpose of a consent form? If he's going to go to jail for not consenting, 
makes no sense. It's just like a political ploy. Hell, we, we, we gave you an option that if you don't accept, too bad. How has this not gotten to the Supreme Court? This is clearly child abuse. It's Canada. It's Canada. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah, it's Canada. Oh jeez, it's. I, know, I mean, that's only like, that's only like one questionable pubic hair away from where we're at in America. I mean, like that's <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's yeah, that's that's really happening now. I mean, obviously, Amazon won't publish books that question that anymore. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that they're they're banning any book that that's that qu or says LGBT is a mental illness. They they're not which allowing is, that. Which is funny because that makes the whole stream. They, 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 they all the things that they've added to that, uh, you know, because mm -hmm. any of them, you know, you're not allowed to question any of them. You know, like so. You know, there's the point. If we if we vote on Amazon with our wallets and stop using them, holy crap. Well, I know Jack's got a book coming out. And he needs Amazon right now, but yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they do pay my rent, uh, so like there's that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So after we order your book on Amazon, we'll uh... yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like it's. I did say this in the other podcast I was on. I think earlier, or maybe earlier today. It we've been on here for a while, but uh, yeah, I think with when it comes to books, uh, I think we're at a real point where you need to have. We're a discussion about creating alternative um, book selling places because uh, Amazon was the place where you they dominated the book market, but now Amazon is where you go to buy your stocks, uh, you know, like and everything else, and that's what they care more about. So they aren't really invested in being a book place anymore, and so it's just you know like they 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 want to sell you. I mean, the the chair I'm sitting on came from Amazon. You know, like it, it's not like they're a book dealer anymore. It's just that's what they 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 monopolize that market, but they monopolize a lot of the other ones too. So I think it's I think I can see an opportunity for a a you don't even have to make it a free speech book website. It just has to be a book website that doesn't censor books. You know, they can carry all the best sellers and other things that because I've I've seen so many people get books that are historical. Uh, my friend, actually, uh, a good friend of mine, actually publishes uh, the best version, the like definitive edition of the book Might Is Right, and you know, which is a book that was written, I don't know, like early twentieth century, you know, like a long time ago. It has some objective, objectionable phrases in it, but it influenced a lot of things, and it is a historical document. The author is long dead. Uh, my friends actually spent a lot of time researching, figuring out who actually even was, because he was like he used a pseudonym. And uh, but uh, yeah, Amazon banned that. Like maybe that was like two years ago. Jack, are you self-published? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay, L let me ask you a question, and this is a great question for you because let's say that somebody goes on, you go on Amazon, and you you. Your new book is called, again, The Fire in the Dark. Fire in the Dark. Okay, when you go and, and order Fire in the Dark or The Way of Men, a lot of times what you're going to see is then, in other words, this user bought The Rational Mail. This user bought Tactical Guide to Women. This user bought Dr. Glover's book, No More right. Mr. This Guy. What happens if, like, one book gets canceled on Amazon? Does it start a domino effect? Do you see what I'm saying? Because everybody knows that, like, if they go to your book on Amazon, those probably those books that I mentioned will probably come up. Like, this user bought this. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, like, uh, the way that canceling is working right now uh, with someone like Animal, because actually Antifa tried to do that to me. They tried to be like... Uh, Jack Donovan is on Audible, and he comes up in recommendations from other books, yeah, and and then still other books are recommended when you choose his books, and therefore Jack Donovan should be on there because it leads people to read these other bad books. You know, it was it, that was their whole argument, uh, and uh, I'm like a gateway drug. I'm like the marijuana of fascism or something. I don't know, but uh, it, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a uh, 
that the way that cancel culture seems to be working right now is that they would have to target me personally. Like I would have to become like a big news item, you know, like, and the trans thing is an easy thing because like, you know, any trans, any person writes a, an anti-trans book, they're going to be in the news. It's going to be a thing. It's going to be like, da, 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 da. then Amazon has to make a decision. So it has to go to whatever Leslie in the decision-making department she has to decide, you know, uh, who gets to get the ax or not. Um, with me, I think that it would, so I, I think it would have to be a big deal. And I, and now I don't think it does a chain necessarily. Uh, there could come a day where, and hopefully not soon, but it's possible. There could come a day where like, if you disagree, like if you don't, if you say that men and women are different, you are, we're not supporting those books anymore. In which point I get the ax. You know, like, or, you know, any number of things, I can see a lot of the, the more kind of angry men's books, uh, more so than maybe most of mine. A lot, a lot of the ones that talk about women and feminism a lot more, I could see maybe them uh, getting canceled. Um, but, you know, I mean, and I could wake up tomorrow and be canceled. I have no idea. It's always out there. But... Uh, I, I there's certain things that can trigger that. Let let me ask you a question. How would you get your? In other words, how would you distribute your books if you were canceled on Amazon? Uh, the worst. Um, well, if I'm only canceled by Amazon, what happens is that I do have a. I don't publish through them. I publish through another company, so I can still get my books printed. So it means that I would have to uh, do what I did this past week and become shipping and receiving Jack Donovan and sit there and send all the damn books out, mm -hmm. which I sell thousands of books a month on Amazon. And obviously that would go down mm -hmm. substantially. And uh, so my income would go down, but I'd be doing more work, which would really suck. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I could still sell books. I could still sell my books. They wouldn't like go away forever. And, and honestly, and this is the sucky thing about how things work, is that like uh, there's still a lot of places in America I could get imprinted, even if, even if I got my big publishing company that I go through doesn't, didn't print them anymore. You know, I could still have them printed. I mean, I had test books printed by a company out of Vegas called 48 Hour Books. I sent them the, the, manu I sent them the, the, the files and I had a, a box of like nice looking books in like 48 hours. It was amazing. So, I mean, I could still sell books. I wouldn't sell them at the volume that I sell them at now. And I probably have a lot more E stuff. You know, you go through Gumroad or something. So, because then if Amazon's going to cancel you, then PayPal is. You know, so I, I don't think, if anything, it would have been stuff I wrote five years ago. It's not stuff that I'm writing now. So, I'm not super worried about it. But the world is so running so fast and so crazy that you just don't know. Uh, so it's just something that is sitting out there and you just can't sit around and think about it all the time because uh, it would make you crazy, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can start to, you know, like I moved, like Instagram, getting canceled from Instagram, I think is sooner, is is more real. Um, even though the stuff I do on there, it's just like that could be, because they'll never, they don't even tell you why or what, there's no reason. You just go away one day. And so, you know, if that happens, I mean, that's why I've been moving people to like uh, email lists and so forth. And that's what a lot of people are doing just because they see the platforms becoming unstable and uh, undependable. So they go to email and, and find other ways to do things. And uh, sometimes they're better. Email is better. I've, I've found I like I like uh, I get better interaction from emails than other things. Yeah. I, I, the, re the reason I'm asking you that, because obviously you're you. You have the biggest, obviously, of course, of anybody here on this panel, but you have a big social media platform and you're an author. So somebody that writes about masculinity and writes about, you know, the things that you write about, sometimes I, that's why asking you the question is really important to hear from basically from the horse's mouth. Like, what are your fears of, of being canceled? I mean, that's your livelihood. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it is. It's like all this, all this goes away. Uh, yeah. Basically, I mean, uh, but maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe a lot of people have been canceled who have had. Uh, I mean, everybody's buying the damn pillows now. Uh, yeah. From the my pillow guy. You yeah. Know, like uh, everybody's buying the my pillows. I mean, who knows? I, I might have. You know, someone with money sweep in and be like, "We got you," uh, and here's what we're gonna do. You know, and uh, so that could happen. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, but like right now, I said I'm not too worried about it. But then, you know, you always have that minute, like, like Amazon has taken a week. Like, it just listed my paperback like within the past six hours, and uh, it's been in the system for like a week and a half. And so, you know, after about the first like four days, I'm like, are they looking at me? Yeah. Are they looking at me? Is it slow because they're looking at me? Uh, and no, it's just slow because, you know, like Denise was on vacation and she needs to put the file in. You know, like it doesn't matter. Who knows why? But, uh, you know, like it's like it, it just took a little extra longer than I thought it was going to. And so, yeah, I'm always like, is it today? Is it today? Uh, you know, but I like I said, right now, I, it's just going to be if they if they decide to go after anybody who writes about men, then yeah, well, a lot of us are in trouble. But uh, and if that becomes the case, and that's fine. I've I've said that. You know, I was talking to Tanner about this the other day, and he has kids, so he has a horse in this race, and he's like, yeah, like the trans thing. Like, I'm not getting into that. I mean, I've already said I think men and women are different, and I think that you know men like you know men are born men and women are born women, and that's the way I feel about it. Um, and even that's like dicey now, but I've already said that and that's already in writing. So I can't take that back and I'm not going to, but you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into that fight. Uh, cause I don't want to be the anti-trans guy, mm -hmm. you know, cause that's just not, that's not how I want my name to go down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I will, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going to be like, you know what? Feminists were right. <laughs> uh, you know, that, I can't do that. That's 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 my line. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna start taking stuff back that I believe is really true. I'm not gonna jump out there and get in the middle of the trans thing because that's. And, and like Tanner's like, hey, I have kids. They're not touching my kids, and the, he's like, I will die on that hill, <laughs> like 100. percent And uh, but I don't have kids, and I'm not. I don't. You know, like I've always been like, hey, do what do whatever you want with your body as an adult. But then when it comes to kids, then it becomes very, very questionable and, uh, and, and very evil. And yeah. so then, it, but even th that's, that's something I'm not going to get into or chase down. That's not a problem I'm going to go after. So your new book is on Amazon now then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm going to put it in the description of this video. Cool. So if anybody wants to purchase, this, purchase Jack's book. In fact, I'm going to put all your books in the description. So. Groovy. Um, yep. I know one of the because uh, I look at my Amazon sales and two of my most popular books that sell um, are Tanner Guzzi's book. That's one of the books. So I've never told I think I might have messaged him that you're one of my I could see and Amazon. I can see what sells and his book is one of them that sells quite frequently yeah. through this channel. Um, Goldman's book sells frequently through this channel. Um, I'm trying to think of the most popular books because I have a whole list of books down there and I can yeah. see the sales, you know, basically every day. But uh, Tanner is one of the most popular books that that uh, that sells on my Amazon channel. I'm trying to think of the other one. There's one other one, too. Um, oh, The Carnivore Diet. That one sells pretty okay. good. Yeah. So Sean Baker's book. But yeah, I'll put so anybody I will put the, you know, and just so anybody knows that you can go and down in the description of the video and I have a lot of Amazon things in the description, but you can, when you click on the link, you can order Jack's book or order something through Amazon and it promotes my, it helps my channel. So actually it helps me. Um, we'll call it uh, financially when you purchase something through Amazon. Yes. So, and I do appreciate everybody who, who purchases all my, beard trimmers and all my stuff that I, my links to Amazon. So, but I'll make sure that Jack's books are in the description of the video for sure. So, but uh, yeah, that's interesting about, you know, the whole cancel thing, man. It just, it just blows my mind that like 
somebody that's writing something and and it's it's crazy because when you when you're writing a book like that and you're trying to get out your philosophy that they can say hey no we don't want people to hear this it blows my mind that where we're at i mean dr seuss has got has gotten gotten canceled you know but you know now he's a bestseller again now he's like a top of the top of the top Now, now he's like selling more than he ever has not yeah not his most popular books those aren't canceled just the fringe ones yeah yeah Yeah, crazy crazy it's insane well and also too i think there's a lot of irony with the with the trans thing too right because i remember um i remember because you know back when you know jordan peterson first came on the scene i remember he you know he was uh he was really talking a lot about the pronouns and the new laws in Canada and how he wouldn't support them. And it was funny because I remember a lot of the, uh, these activists talking to him, debating with him, they would say, well, Dr. Peterson, you know, isn't it, uh, you know, these are just small, you know, rules. They're not really, they're not really meant to affect everyday life. They're just, you know, so people feel a little more accepted and like, you know, it's not really a big deal. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. And he was like, um, not really. Here's why, you know, read the Gulag Archipelago. <laughs> like, this is, this is the beginning of something very, very bad. And, uh, they're like, no, you're just making a, you know, a mountain out of a mole, molehill. Well, now here we are. Not, and he was a hundred percent correct. You can now go to jail for these words. You can, uh, you can go to jail just for simply for, for disagreeing and advocating for your children. So it's gone, it's gone far beyond just pronouns. It's gone far beyond just using a certain word. It's that and much more. And of course, you know, like we were, you know, alluding to earlier, like once you, once you cancel one thing, you can't really just cancel the one thing. It's like other things are going to follow. Eventually it's going to become a longer and longer list. You know? That's what they do. They, they go for your children because uh, they are the, so um, if to phrase it, the unprotected in, in public. So they, they go and uh, try to indoctrinate them and brainwash them because they, they know that it will hurt the families and the fathers and stuff. So that that's the most cruel and evil things they can do. You know, and another thing that's kind of funny too is, you know, I'm a, I'm a science fiction fan and I was going back and I was revisiting this, this old anthology uh, edited by Harlan Ellison called dangerous visions. And uh, you know, if I, if I remember correctly, you know, a lot of these authors of the time were, you know, like Harlan Ellison was a hardcore Democrat. You know, I, I like the guy, I think he was, uh, he was, uh, he was a great writer, but you know, they were like, really starting to come together with this anthology and they're like, we're going to break all the norms with this book. We're going to, we're going to go and and do all these things that everybody says are taboo. We're going to just go right for it. And what was really funny is I read this story, uh, about this. There's a woman who's like obsessed with a fat man that lives in the upstairs room in the apartment. And she ends up like stalking him like pretty hardcore and she sneaks into his room at night and like, like just listens to him breathing and just going about his day. It's very creepy. It's a very strange Sounds story. Like girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was That's not normal. Odd. That's not normal. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's almost as, it's almost as terrifying as the, uh, the, uh, the, what was it? The immortal cougar. It was a terrifying. Oh my God! No, nothing <laughs> it was terrifying. a terrifying story. Anyway, but um, I was reading this story, and there's because okay, and then it suggested that maybe this fat guy is an alien, right? And then in passing, the narrator says, "Well, you know, there's only two genders, and uh, you know, may- but maybe there's an alien out there, and so this is going to be interesting." And I just thought it was funny because I'm just like, "Wow, you know, this would be canceled in 2021, and th- these were all written by Democrats." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> of the time it was insane but yeah they just you know it it really just kind of consumes itself over time that's what i've noticed yep 
You, you know, Marty, isn't it up in New York where they're saying you can't say mom or dad? Is that correct? I'm always trying to push that, you know, and they got heavy pushback because you got to remember there's a very big Hispanic community, black community that is like enough's enough with this white bullshit, you know? This is this is white people shit, and they're right on this one. Because my, showing respect for your parents is very huge with minorities. You know, I don't want to hear stories about all the single parents. No, it's very very big, and there's a huge pushback all of a sudden. And that's what we need. We just that's why these religious groups have so much power because they don't care how they're stigma. They push back really hard, and. New York is crazy enough, and you know, get off your chest. I just remember what I wanted to say. I keep hearing how everyone says women are so fragile and women are so this, and you gotta treat them this way. Every woman I've slept with always wants you to like grab them by the throat and hit them with a brick. I don't understand <laughs> what is going on. You know? <laughs> just had to say that. No, that's okay. It's get it off your chest, and you got it off your chest. I like it. <laughs> Great. Anthony Velasco says, yeah, I thought of that. I, I'm not sure what he thought of, but. Uh. <laughs> oh, I told him to do a book review video because he keeps talking about the towers. Where did the towers go? Oh, yeah, Anthony's book reviews. That'd be great. I think if he took all his notes and put them together, he'd have his own book. <laughs> It'd also be like the ramblings of a schizophrenic if you put it together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great title, the ramblings of a schizophrenic. Fantastic. The ramblings of Velasquez. The voice of Velasquez. Uh, what you need is a panel of Anthony and a diehard feminist reviewing books. It would just be the best thing. Especially if Anthony's drinking heavy. This would be great. <laughs> See, Anthony, I'm plugging you. Well, Anthony, Anthony Velasquez, YouTube. Anthony's in California. He can just find the nearest the nearest person and he could do a show with them and that'll be that'll be perfect. The collecting the collected writings of A V. Anthony, the more purple her hair, the bigger the big, the bigger the feminist. <laughs> Gonzo, any more news? Um, yeah, actually, you know, we do have some more here. Uh, in the in the spirit, you know, there's been a lot of trans news recently. Is this like a coincidence? Is something like going on right now? Is there like I don't know? There just seems to be this is this is like um, more news articles than usual. Anyway, uh, the Telegraph says the Pentagon may reverse gender-neutral physical fitness tests for U.S. Army soldiers. A new test has been scoring men and women on the same basis, but more than half of women are failing. What a so, surprise. So, <laughs> um, it's yeah. like Paul a, Watson, imagine my shock. <laughs> that's a very bad domino effect. And there's a study in New York City when they changed the height requirement because women were suing. They found out was they changed the height requirement because they want women to pass. They ended up hiring like shorter guys. And no, I'm six foot, but I'm not bragging on anyone short. My father said the reason the reason was when he was a kid is that there used to be fences and a cop had to be able to look over when he patrolled the neighborhood. But now you're getting these problems with some of these officers. And, you know, I'm very pro-cop. Everyone knows Blue Lives Matter to me because I'm a former military vet. Holy crap, some of these cops are just plain assholes who have, like, these issues of power because they were five foot two in high school and chubby. And I know I'm ranting, but, you know, this is health and safety. And like, FDNY now, fire department, now lowering the height, lowering the weight they have to carry in their trainings, their physical trainings to pass. You're going to kill someone. If you can't carry 200 pounds over your shoulder, well, anyone should be able to. I think my 10-year-old could. But um, this, people can die. When you do stuff to appease people, especially health and safety, military, I don't want to be in a foxhole with a girl who has acrylic nails on. I'm sorry. You know, because we don't want to offend the transgenders. They like their nails. Just, holy crap, my life is on the line. You know, and one, one your weakest link your unit is as weak as the weakest link, and this is a problem. No, then not one female has passed the Navy SEAL test. Are they going to lower the standard so they can brag about they got a female in? No, we, when it comes to health and safety and the you know, the security of our country, 
people have to start opening up, saying things like this is this is bullshit. Like you need to step up and say, I, I know you want equality, but people's lives are at stake at this point. Did I get too much off my chest? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I've had the same conversation, this exact same conversation with somebody very recently within the past, I'll say the past two days. So, yeah, I got I to gotta dip out too, guys. I got to okay. go home and eat and go to bed. All right. Well, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Of course, you are always welcome on here. I did put, I will put your books in the description of this video for sure. Cool. Uh, real quick, tell everybody how they can find you, all your social media. Uh, best Instagram uh, for as long as I have it is at start the world. And my website is jackdashdonovan.com and uh, my books are on Amazon. And I did put your YouTube channel in the, uh, in the, in the chat, live chat. Yeah. I got to make some more YouTube things one of these days. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Thank you, Jack. I really, wow, you said some powerful stuff today. I appreciate you coming on. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank me you. too. Good to meet you, Jack. I love the background, and it's uh, it's an honor to see you and talk with you. Cool. Yeah, yeah good to meet you. Cool. All right, yeah. see you guys. Thank Stay you. Up. Much All luck. Right. Okay. Take All care. Right. Hey. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That was great. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have. Uh, I, I what I like to do is I throw out invites to different people that I know before, you know, in the afternoon, and and um, so I've spent some some good times with Jack at uh, at twenty one. Um, had some great conversations, great group conversations. Um, just uh, just a fun guy to be around and. You know, a lot of a lot of wisdom there. But um, in person, Jack is is a is a barbarian. If you guys ever get to meet him? He's a he's a very intimidating figure. But uh, in in real life, um, he's he's a good guy. Good guy to talk with about quite a few things. He's a um, he actually came to the last twenty one. He wasn't a speaker, but he came there to be a part and uh just to hang out so you know cool. so, yeah peekaboo says what's jack's instagram his instagram it's start, is, start, it's start the world start the world i'm typing it in right now yeah so cool um you want to get like anthony back on or peekaboo <laughs> or or who's the new lady i saw her? who is the new guy it's peter Peter's already on. You're cool as shit. Yeah. So you're cool. Uh, OPS, she's new too. She want to hop on? I'm oh. going to say probably no to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All but right. Um, yeah. Um, so any more Gonzo news? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got, we've got, we've got a couple things here. Um, you know, I'd like to announce this is a new sub segment of Gonzo News. I like to call this one uh, "Fun with Censorship," um, but this is <laughs> this is just a, a fun a fun thing that happens when you begin to censor things. Here, this comes from Daily Mail. eBay has now pulled Dr. Seuss books, but keeps Mein Kampf and Louis yeah. Farrakhan books. It's fun. It's fun with censorship. Yeah, I saw I saw that that exact thing, uh, thing that yeah. you just said there. So Yeah. This is like the irony. The yeah. irony of it. Let's see. What? Anyway, this one just uh this one just popped up. I feel like I gotta check this out. Uh this comes from Fox News. Texas bar owner says illegal immigrants are hiding in his bathrooms. What? Have you guys heard of this one? <laughs> I feel like Anthony would have something to say about that. You repeat, did Anthony hear that? <laughs> he looks like he heard it. Did you hear that, Anthony? Oh my God, Texas bar order. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, it says here a Texas bar owner of a bar situated on the southern border says the migrants are hiding in his bathrooms in trucks as they see uh, as they seek to evade authorities. The latest sign of a surge at the southern border. When I go in the mornings, sometimes I go to do some work. There's people in the bathroom. They hide in the bathrooms. Luke, uh, Lupe Cabrera, who owns Cabrera's bar, told National Review. Me and my brother own a trucking company, too, and they'll hide in the trucks. Wow. Um, the outlet reports the situation at the bar in Graneno, along with the Rio Grande, Rio Grande, has become an almost daily occurrence. His bar is near the border wall, of which President Biden halted construction, and there is an unfinished section near Cabrera's bar. Cabrera told the outlet he has seen a migrant uptick in recent weeks, although it has long been a destination for migrants coming through. Most of the people I see are harmless, Cabrera told the National Review, but you never know what the hell is going on, who's crossing or what. So yeah, he's he's seeing them in his bathrooms. Oh my god! They're just chilling. Imagine out. he goes into the bathroom, take a leak, and there's three people staring at him. There's a whole family in the bathroom. There's a whole family. Well, Anthony has a ladder in case he has to get the hell out of there. So we're 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 being we're being ruled by a fucking potato. <laughs> being ruled by a potato. Yeah. Where's I mean, holy shit, butter? dude! I mean. Dude, just don't call him. Just don't call him Mister. Popped in. We mentioned him earlier. Yeah, I mean, no one's even talking about that. I mean, holy shit, dude. I mean, why isn't this the biggest story in the fucking world? America's being ruled by someone who is is he can't fucking put three words together. I should be ruling, because I'm better. <laughs> Anthony, it could be worse. It could be Kamala no, I could, Harris. I could rule. How could it be fucking worse? So, if, be Kamala Harris. At least she could speak. I don't know. You I'm want her to speak? Better. You want to hear what she has to say? Maybe it is Kamala Harris, but Joe Biden is just the face. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you. She might be better. I mean, if she might. If it was oh, Kamala no. Harris, those loans would have been approved. Those student loan pardons would have been done by now. Well, you know what? Honestly, dude, uh, I'd rather have the student loans uh, approved before uh, all the other bullshit that we don't even know about gets approved. Well, none well, of it gets approved. Stop approving. Stop well, I mean, I would, yeah, yeah, I, I, well, yeah, it'd be nice to, for none of it to get approved, but, you know, to be honest with you, it's all corrupt. You wanted to go to uh, student loans or to uh, some other bullshit, you know. People think it's great. I'm going to get 1400 bucks. It's like, dude, you're going to pay for that shit. It's going to cost you, like, who knows what, depending on how successful you are. You're you know? lucky. You get 1400 I get shit. No, oh, I don't need five. To fuck. I'm not getting 1400 I, I, don't even, I don't even know if I'm going to get anything, dude, honestly. I, I mean, I don't even really care. It's, it's not about that. 1400 doesn't do shit for me. 1400 isn't even my fucking rent payment, you know? This is this so. just beer money. Yeah, it's beer money. That's a lot of fucking beer. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> she might have a problem. <laughs> Wait, now, Anthony drinks some expensive beer here. I saw last week he had, uh, I believe it was Bell's Two Hearted. That's not yeah, cheap. Yeah. So, no. Bell's Two Hearted. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might as well because Biden's paying for that fucking shit. Did so I get I'm the Walmart Equate version of beer? Walmart Equate? <laughs> the generic for Walmart? What is it called? Equate? Yeah, Equate no. IP. Yeah, I create IPA. Sixty nine yeah. cents a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> you get it at like the drug the drugstore section of the store. Yeah. <laughs> no. Amazing. Now I want yeah, you guys I know, to get the, I want you guys to guess on this next one. Real or satire? All right. Um I'll just read the headline. Drop in the bucket. Black Americans who will get $25,000 each as part of $10 million in reparations from the city. Say Chicago, it's not yes. enough. In the outside Chicago town. That's true. 
Yeah. 25,000. And you know what? All the black leaders are saying, don't put it in their pockets. Put it into tax breaks, future tax breaks. Encourage them to work. That's what they're saying. Don't give them the cash. The oh, tax, shit. It's a whole thing. Oh, man. Oh, my God. 25. They give them 25,000. 25, that's, mm. that's the real stimmy right there. Uh, that's yeah, where all the that's, stimmies that's, are going. That's not federal money. That's city money. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's city money. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Do you know, <laughs> Could you imagine being a taxpayer in that area going, what the hell? You know, yep. right? <laughs> the tax wait, bill wait, wait, double. Wait, so not everybody's getting it? No, only blacks. Only well, blacks. Wait, 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 wait. Reparations. Let's, 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 let's break this down a little. How do you – do you have to do a DNA test to – Prove who you are. <laughs> hey, what if, what if, what if I'm trans black? I'm yeah, transracial. Trans, I'm, tra yeah. I'm transracial. Ancestry. <laughs> right. That's what I'll do. I'll go, I'm going to go to that town and offer ancestry.com.com cases at a discount so they can get, get approved for their uh, 25,000. But what I'm saying is, is, isn't that, isn't that racism by, 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 not that I believe in racism, I believe in good and evil, but isn't that like judging somebody by the color of their skin? What I, I think mean, they'll probably do is they're going to go back to isn't that my the act, definition. Yeah. By definition, isn't that the definition of racism? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can go to on census. You can you can have it judged by census. So let me ask you a question. Let's say I get a DNA test tomorrow and move to the place outside of Chicago. And I have one percent um, African blood in me. <laughs> Do I get twenty five thousand? No. Of course, Mister Tony Williams. <laughs> well, what is the? What is the? What is the? Um, I mean, what are the qualifications? Is there? Are you have to be fifty percent, twenty five percent? At I mean, least I'm you have to look black. You know. I'm not sure, but New York City has something that qualifies if you're black for what they call MWBEs, minority women businesses, and you have to qualify to be considered a black business. And I, I, I guess they're going to use the same standards that the city does, New York City does, qualify as black. There are standards out there already that New York City does. So businesses, if you're black owned, you get more points when it comes to being for city contracts. I mean, you talk about what's his name, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I mean, Meghan. she's the most black person I've ever seen. I mean, you know, she's the whitest black person I've ever seen, man. Yeah, I mean, what's Michael Jackson then? So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you guys a little. I'll tell you guys a little uh, connection with uh, Meghan Markle. My daughter goes to the same high school that she graduated from. It's a Elizabeth Warren thing. eligible for it's this? It's not a good thing, right? Huh? Elizabeth Warren eligible for this? She might be 1%. No, Elizabeth Warren's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> She's 1% Cherokee. She's 1% black. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, nah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, I heard crazy about shit. this, Gonzo. Yeah, the reparations. Yeah. Everyone's losing their mind on the internet. It's See, reparations. I, 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 I've stayed out of it mostly. <laughs> hey, you know what? Repar reparations, one payment. Just one payment and be done with it. After that, I don't want to hear about it. Be done with it, right? Well, can, 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 can do you guys understand the way I think about it? Okay. Ra this is, has nothing to do with race, but how can you be bought out? Isn't that an insult? Isn't yeah. it a blackmail payment? No pun intended. Well, yeah. I mean, isn't it? Isn't it like here you go? Like here you yeah, go. But let's, but let's end it. But let's end that shit though. But let's just pay it out, end it, and be done with it. And then when people cry later, it's like you know what? Go fuck yourself. Uh, I say like it already. <laughs> I already say it. You know, go fuck yourself. I mean, I don't care. You can give losers all the money you want in the world, and they'll, they'll still be fucking losers. So go fuck them, but whatever, dude. If 
But that's how politicians roll. They want to pander to losers. They don't want to pander to winners. You know, winners so, don't want to be pandered to. You no, know. we don't need it. We don't need the fucking. We don't need your fucking money. Go take your fucking. You know what? Take your fourteen hundred, nineteen hundred, whatever. They go stick it up your ass. I would rather see a big dildo stuck up by his ass, or or uh, or Cassetti's ass, or uh, or I would just. I, I just love to. Fu- you know, I would pay for that. I would pay to have uh, uh, to watch a video of of that nineteen hundred dollar stuck up his ass. Better than me giving it to me. I don't need it. Fuck, dude. I. $900 ain't going to do shit for me, dude. That, that's not going to pay a fucking... That's not going to pay my rent. So go fuck yourself. As far as I'm concerned. Okay. I mean, well, I don't know, dude. It's like... And then it's, it's, real it's stupid the shit. Dude. Real stupid shit. They're, I mean, I real because... Because I, I don't know where you guys live, but here is just fucking... Re, it's retarded. It's just fucking retarded. <clears throat> you don't want to become worse, a... Anthony. Anthony, it's only getting oh, worse. I, there. How can it? How can it? I don't know. Oh, Maybe you can, right. but... Wait till you get to 60% tax rate. Or at 50 right what? now? 60. Wait to get to 60% I'm gonna, tax hang rate. Hang on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address some comments in here. Um, where is it here? Danger Russ says, America will never do reparations. We all still scared about it. Um, has nothing to do with that, just so you know, danger. Um, then he says, uh, the people storming the White House wasn't black. Uh, the White House wasn't stormed. It was the Capitol yeah. building. And yeah. that was a bunch of kind of mi- misinformed people. But I'd like to see all the other stuff addressed that happened in 2020, all the other federal buildings, all the other cities, everything else, you know. You are winners and superior. Why crowd out race and blacks are winning everything. Men in competition. Just so you know. Uh, danger, Russ. This is not about. This is what we're making it. If you're listening, we're not making a, it about race at all. We're making it about people being people. That's it. it has yeah. Nothing to do with race. Nothing at Thank all. You. Well, that's the thing. Fuck about race. Um, it's about yeah. race. Is, race is yeah. bullshit, dude. I think, I think you're you're misunderstanding what we're saying. Because if you give out reparations, you are now differentiating races. That's what the first problem with reparations. Um, and that was the problem with minority businesses in New York City, and a lot of the black leadership had problems with it. Because if you give blacks a special code, you feel like you are now separating us instead of making us equal. Let, let me let me tell you something about this whole thing that's been going on, you know, with uh, you know black and white. What I've noticed is that people, and I've said this before, is that. You know, when I talked to like Jesse, I said, it's it's amazing how after this whole thing started really at the beginning of last year, how Black Lives Matter and all that, all that stuff, all of a sudden everybody had to make sure they were seen with a, this is my black friend. This is my, you know, pictures on Facebook and this and that and black clothes and all that horse shit. You don't have to do that. Whatever happened to this is my friend. Um, mm-hmm. I want to bring up a point here. Um, is that uh, race is real, and uh, what 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 I want to say is most blacks, I think, they look everything from a uh, black perspective, like from their uh, racial uh, lens, like through a racial lens, and. And wh- why we're not seeing it is is because uh, most whites aren't doing that. That they have been trained with uh, anti-racism and uh, and uh, because because we we have never needed it. Uh, if if we were all separated, we wouldn't need to to look uh, because then then we were all the same. Like like whites live there, blacks live there, so they wouldn't have to care about it because we've been pacified. So, so my my core point is that race itself is is uh, is real, and we need to see see why why it matters. Uh, we 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 shall not fight each other, but we shall. Uh, oh, Speeder, there's more to it. There's just it's, it hasn't just been the slavery. It's just been the years of redlining. 
And there's been, you know, I'm, I'm acknowledged there was racism. There's been heavy racism in the country that unfortunately gave blacks a very poor start building a ground and ground roots in America. Because you got to remember, after the Civil War, these white <laughs> cops were throwing blacks in jail just for jaywalking. They were giving him 15, 20 years in prison for silly little stupid things. We acknowledge that. But you have to remember, it, times have changed. If you look at the manosphere now, right? Look at the manosphere. And I look at the divorce dads I work with. The huge swath are black. Look at Coach Greg Adams. Look at all of the new red pill YouTubers who have content. They're all black, dominantly black. And we're all banding together because we're facing a common enemy, which is uh, feminism. But, you know, um, it, but, but by mentioning race nowadays, and I'm, the red pill community, the blacks in the red pill community are noticing this. And if you read the book, especially Greg Adams points it out. Mentioning race, you're now dividing and conquering. You're now pandering to a base because the, the, the biggest growing entrepreneur group, richest group, surging, is blacks in the United States. Surging. Business owners, um, new millionaires, they're the highest ratio. And, you know, it, it, what we need to do is if, instead of reparation is giving them the education tools making sure that these poor schools have the same money as these other white schools that are being poor. You just can't give it away and you can't start identifying who's who and creating division. You're creating divisions by identifying people instead of saying yeah. you're a man, you're a woman. I want, I want, I want to chime in on this. I want to chime on this really quick, really quick. Uh, I, I, I disagree a little bit with speeder. Like I don't think race is real. Culture differences are real. Nationalities are real, different nationalities. But if you think about it, we're all the same color, just different shades. We all have melatonin in our skin, just different shades. We're all the human race, okay? And I see Danger Russ here talking about give us 250 years, give us 350 years. I'm sorry, Danger, but slavery has been around since humankind, and the blacks have had just a small fraction of it, okay? And every country in the world had slavery. It was America that was the one that, was the first to free slavery, you know, and then you had William Wilberforce in England push it over there in Europe. So blacks in America have best shot ever. I don't know you, I don't know where you've traveled. I'm from America. I've lived many places in America. I currently live in Brazil. I've been to Europe and I've seen the differences. So keep bringing the race thing is like what Marty said. It keeps bringing division, but look at, uh, predominant black people they don't like this look at morgan freeman he hates this black history month it's ridiculous all of it's ridiculous you know so i don't i don't believe race is real uh it's been propagated it's been pushed there's political agenda behind it but as someone who's been many places and lived in lots of different places nationalities are real culture different culture differences are real but we're all the human race we all bleed red you know, it, we're not different species. Do you understand? Like, like you can have interracial children and stuff. It's not like it, we're, we're the same. You know, it doesn't matter what your, what your pigmentation is, what your melatonin is in your skin. So I just wanted to put that out there because America is still the place. If you want to work your ass off, it's still the place of opportunity. And you can make yourself something, not look and blame somebody else. Oh, it's them. It's them. It's 300 years of this, 300 years of that. No, I'm sorry. It, it doesn't work like that, you know? So, um, well, yeah, I'm, I want to just respond that uh, uh, firstly, uh, race is not skin deep, uh, race is a biological reality. Oh. Uh, it, it, we we got to look at it face the facts that, that races are real, but it is what you do with it. it. Just because races exist doesn't mean you have to do this and that. You don't have to divide your uh, yourself if you're you're against a tyrannical government. You can you can work with whatever race you want. Uh, you you don't have to look at people for the race they are either. You I mean you can cooperate with whatever race, but but the problem is don't ignore the fact that race exists because blacks know this is a biological reality. 
they they know it and 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 white people are getting cucked and and are trying to be be the good ones so to say and they're like no you are the real racist i'm not racist i'm, I'm a very good person the problem is when you're denying bi- biology that then, then you have created a problem for yourself well so, those biological do those, those biological differences come from adaptation when as humankind move throughout the world in the tribes yes. from way back when you know it's adaptation of the same kind of human race so people adapted to their environment so you're right as far as the biological standpoint but still it we're still all the human race is the point i was trying to make could, could i do a quick thing here i want to pussy i want to i want to say something i want to play something from my my black friend real quick okay here we go they accuse you of being racist or having white privilege, it best to just give them the finger and tell them how the cow ate the cabbage. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I want to bring, bring uh, amazing. you to, Amazing is right. Uh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there. Well, I, I just want to uh, I just want to, you know, drop drop some some bombshells here because, uh, you know, I want to I want to, you know, make sure everybody understands just how much racism has been in America since it since it started. And even before um, it looks it's something like like about that much. There's been this much racism in the history of America. OK, um, now and I say that because. Um, <clears throat> when people, you have to think of what racism means. What does racism actually mean? This word has been um, bastardized. This word has been uh, modified. This yes. word has been thrown into every single context possible yes. to the point where there's no sense of its original meaning. There has Correct. been zero hatred of a color. There has been zero anything to do with a color. And let me explain because... Um, well, like, for example, who, you know, you guys know the, the first, uh, you know, slave owner in America, one of the first slave owners was a black man. He was a very wealthy yes. black man who had white slaves. Um, you know, back in the day during slavery, you know, there were slaves who were happy to be slaves. They had they had zero issues. Now, of course, there were slaves that had problems. There were slaves who uh, who had a rough time, I'm sure. But. It wasn't bad across the board, and it was a very uh, it was a very heated thing because a lot of people were happy with the arrangement. There was an, there were economic reasons for it, and the fact is is that these days people think of it as this entirely wholly bad thing. All right, now I'm not defending slavery by any means. I just want to give a historical context to this, right? So, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, so racism. We're going to define racism simply as hatred of a color, Mm -hmm. hatred of someone because of their appearance, Um, because their nationality, that sort of thing combined. Myself. Oh, sorry if I interrupted, but but, uh, yeah, I, I would I would say the definition of racism is to abuse another race or having power or or like over another race uh, taking advantage of another race so i think that's yeah, mm, yeah. so I mean, hold on i'm so confused gonzo mm-hmm. are you saying that blacks weren't intentionally thrown in jail and no that absolutely is real but like okay. let, me, let me throw this into context there's been zero racism right because think of i want to uh, like let me remind you of like the nazis right there is zero racism with the Nazis. Now, let me explain. And well, because it's anti-Semitism. Well, <laughs> okay. it's this, Yeah, it's all the same thing. Let me explain. Because they were told, right, what was the propaganda at the time? It was that the Jews have had it too well. That was the propaganda. Like, they're prospering. They're, they're no, the too- Jews are the reason why we're um, a poor country and yeah. we can't succeed and blah, blah, blah. Not the Jews have it too well. The Jews are evil and they've been well, that plotting was, that, our demise. That was part of it yeah. too. There was a lot going on at that time, right? But the point is, is that it wasn't hatred of a color that allowed that to happen. It was belief in lies. It was belief in, in um, propaganda. 
and yeah, and lies, things that are not true. And this is exactly what this, you know, so that's why, that's why racism doesn't really uh, exist. Hatred of colors doesn't really exist. It's, it's a, uh, it's a belief in lies. So, is this COVID or, or racism? <laughs> yeah. That's a very good question. So yeah, so so you know to touch on what you were saying there, uh, Marty. Like, get what you're saying philosophically. I get it. You say, it's, you're saying it's a mindset. It's not actually hating someone. It, it's a well, belief it's, that no, people it's, tell it's you hatred. that. Yeah, it's hatred. It's hatred, I, but it's I, not I hatred it, of a but, color. Yeah. But you know, as you know, it. We're, we're towing a very thin line. This conversation is towing a very thin line. Um. You, you know, I don't know. I don't have, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't have an answer to uh, how to make up for how we treated people. You in the don't. Past. But, I, I, but you know what? I don't, it's not my place to have an answer. But we don't because we're not the ones guilty for doing it. The people who are getting the reparations, they're not the ones that suffered. So it's not, it's That's part of the right. history. That's it's right. part of the past. So there's my no making up to do. My ancestors weren't here 250 years ago or 200 or even 100 years ago. Yeah, but doesn't um, matter. Doesn't matter. That's the point, no, though. But my point is, I don't have an answer now. But I do know is, you can't move forward. You can't step. You can't make progress moving forward if you're constantly turning backwards. If you're constantly looking back, you can't move forward. And there has been a prosper in the black community noted. And yes, is there is there still problems? Of course there is. Of course there is. Is there anti-Semitism in the United States? Of course there is. Is there anti-Muslim in the United States? Of course there is. You know, that's just how life is. And the thing is, you're starting to see that I'm more worried about the manosphere. I don't give a shit about a, a lot of other stuff. I don't care about political parties, Democrat, Republican. I care about manosphere, and what's happening to men, and what kind of world is my son going to live in, and my grandsons are going to live in. I'm worried that women are becoming feminine and are becoming less effeminate. They're becoming masculine. And the manosphere, as I see, a lot of blacks, a lot of Hispanics, and we and we need to work together. We got to stop fighting. We need to stop this divisiveness. We need to stop choosing. The only side you should be on is I'm a man. I want the world to be masculine. It doesn't yeah. matter what race you're in. But yeah, I get that. But there's also things that men do, and the infighting. And a lot of it has to do with the manosphere and a lot of these issues that's going on right now has nothing to do with men and has everything to do with money. And yes. that's the bottom line. Yes. It's not about the message. The message has been watered down to make dollars. To I, blind agree. You. Yeah. I agree that everybody in that umbrella and in that sphere, um, I, I say most, not all, but most are in it for the message. But when that message is watered down for the sake of dollars, and I have nothing against anybody who makes dollars, that's great. But don't sell me your half-assed fucking course for $800 and trying to tell me how a woman thinks or her fucking body language. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. Go out there and interact with people. Talk to people. You don't need to buy a course for $800 to tell you how to do something when it comes to interacting with another person. Open your mind, guys. That's what this is the problem with the manosphere. It's it's gotten watered down. It's become a fucking it's become big fucking business is what it is. Okay? I don't yeah, I agree. I, That's yeah. why I love coach Adams, Tony. You know, he all he has is he has these two books. They're loaded with statistics. Not just his ideas, his lawyer, you know. Anyone who's selling you courses, like Tony said, um, it, you're not going to get your you're not going to get your money back. You're not going <laughs> to posted it. You're not going to get your money back. But and, tonight and tonight only, I dropped it <laughs> down from four ninety nine to two forty nine. Volume one: How to Meet a High Value Woman. Okay, and that's tonight and tonight only. Okay. Just so you know. So uh, anybody, if you want to get this course, it's there's going to be a link in the description of the video. You click on it, 
You can pre-order. I can overnight it to you tomorrow, even though it's not in a book form. We'll still add an, another 50 bucks on for an overnight delivery. So this is the shit I'm talking about right here. <laughs> but yeah, and, and to get dangerous, I understand where you're coming from. My only issue is it's it, in reparations doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't fix the problem. It's just a Band-Aid. Yeah. It's a payoff. Well, it's a payoff you know, for your allegiance. It's pandering. Party. It's it's it doesn't payoff solve anything. For a political party. It's to make people feel better. Oh, you know, I'm so so bad because I'm white and you, you know, let me help you. Let me give you. That's well, nonsense. It's sort of like with the Democratic Party with the first party to recognize Israel and New York City um Every every Jew was a Democrat, became a Democrat because of it. Or the way Barack Obama did his Cuba deal, so every Cuban now is Republican. Well, JFK with the Bay of Pigs, they're Republican. You know, people associate things with par political parties now. Instead of actually sitting back and saying, who's actually looking out for me as an individual? A simple way to put it is if you want to be bought, that's slavery right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's socialism too. When you pander to a when you pander to a group, you know. Look at look at Venezuela. He pandered to the poor because there's more poor than rich, and and look how quickly they went to crap. And that's what the that's what these Ocasio Cortezes are doing. And that's why you're going to see a silent majority of Democrats quietly vote Republican. You know, they're they're a huge silent majority. I see it in New York City. But I understand where you're coming from, Dangerous. You know, you, you make valid points on some things, but, you know, it, 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 there's no logical way to do it the right way at this point. So why do it if you're not going to do it right? You well, know, Russ, Russ it would have made sense 250 much. years ago. After the mm -hmm. Civil War, that's when it would have made sense. It's like after World War II, Germany did reparation payouts. And you know what? That didn't didn't make every Jew forgive them. <laughs> Not one Jewish person goes, oh, thanks for reparations. I, I, you know, I, I forgive you for the travesties you caused. Do you guys know that Poland, out of everybody's check, they pay, they pay the Jewish people? Do you know that? Yes, Germany yeah. pays. Yeah. Germany, Germany pays them still. Yes. yes. And so, a huge debt. so does Poland, if I'm correct. And I what does maybe that, what does it's that everywhere. Really do? What does that do for? It's for part of a huge debt they have to pay back. Mm. And yeah. you know what? Okay. And no one, the Jews don't forgive him. It's you know I have a great grandmother who came from Nazi Germany. She would never forgive them. Never. You know, even though my father married a Catholic and she had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> You know, it is a sad story, dangerous. I, I understand. You know, there's stories. You could look at um, South America, where you are, Finn, how the Spaniards came and raped and killed the, the, the Indians. Yeah, and here's here was Portugal. Here, here was Portugal, uh, too. Yeah. And then you look at Guiana, the Caribbean islands. It's everywhere. Slavery was everywhere. When you're, when you're the dominant empire, you had slaves. Look at Vikings. Number one rated show. We love Ragnar Lothbrok, right? Well, that's the point. That's the point I was trying to make. Since since humanity existed, there's been slavery. But then Gonzo was making a good point too, because a lot of the slavery back, not all, but a lot of it was indentured servitude. You know, you pay off a debt or you can't earn something and you work for a couple of years as a slave. And a lot of people made these negotiations, made these deals because like, like we're talking about earlier when, when, when Jack was on about how nowadays people – just want to sit back and let the government take care of them because you don't want to make those hard decisions because to be free, you got to make the tough choices, hard decisions. So some people prefer to, to work for someone and you could call it slavery nowadays, but like I said, it was indentured servitude. You know, that, that was what it was. So it goes back way back to the beginning of time, way back. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Oh, it's in the Bible. Well, I, well in, the Bible. in the Bible, in the Bible, those, it was servant, it was indentured servitude. And the Jews, it was like what Gonzo was saying about the Nazis because um, the, the Pharaoh was like, oh, the Jews had it too well. And he turned the, the, the Egyptians against the Jews. But anyways, it goes way back. And I'm not trying to whitewash the, the slavery from the 17th century and 18th century, but they had a small, they had a small 
uh, uh, portion of the history. Would I want to be a slave? Hell no. I'm, I don't mind making the tough decisions of my life. I don't mind working hard. I've been homeless many times and I didn't stop working to take care of myself and take care of my family. Okay. I'm, so, I'm going to be homeless, Finn. Give me a call. I'll stop. That. I'm going to address this. Question. <laughs> God punished slavery. No. And how do you know that, Russ? How do you know that? Well, we don't know the acts of life. Well, no. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, if you want to dive deep into the Bible on that one, you know, the the whole thing with with slavery was because there were many different reasons like you know like Mr. Finn just brought up there is a lot of reasons why you could be a slave and you know actually the the bible says it gives very clear instructions and and uh and rules that actually uh make it more fair for the slave actually actually improves the conditions and also there is a very clear instruction to treat your slaves well if you have slaves you know, um, or servants. And then, you, then there was the whole thing of like concubine wives and that sort of thing. There was a, it was a, it was a whole setup they had back then that we don't really have anymore. Um, well, listen, it's just how life is. It's just when one ruling party is, does stuff unconscionable. Well, well, the funny thing is the, the way we're looking at it, we're looking at the whole of history with the lens of the last few centuries and so there it goes much deeper than how it's perceived in the modern day narr narrative okay well we're all slaves well Everyone, as a, cri as a christian know? as a christian as myself i am a slave of christ no and, and but we're all slaves you know some people have to work they have to work in shitty jobs well we all you know, have to cleaning yeah, up we, no, no, or, or be homeless okay yeah you know uh, he made a comment here, right? God punished the Egyptians with the 10 plagues. So America no, that's not why he had the plagues. He had the plagues to make a point. Let my people go. He had to make a point. And he was, and he, and if you read the Bible, he put Pharaoh and he hardened Pharaoh's heart to show his might and his magnitude and his power. That's, that's, I mean, that's getting into an argument of theology, which is not tonight's topic, but that's not why he put those yeah. plagues on, e on the Egyptians. And on that note, I, I wish you guys a farewell. I'm sorry. I was, I was gonna leave at noon, but it actually got that kept me on past midnight. Yeah. That was really good. And thank you, know, you, Tony, for having me. Well, thank you, Marty. Thanks for coming on. We're gonna knock her down here shortly, anyways. Um all right. Take care, yeah. Gonzo. Take care, Finn. Cheers. Thank you, everyone in the chat. You've been great. Yeah, have a Good nice guys. one. Peace. Yeah. 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 Well, what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to we're going to kill this stream anyway shortly. We've gone for four hours and that's plenty. I'm tired and I've got to eat. Um, but um, danger, Russ, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you go ahead and give us one comment. So what is your you got one comment. So make it make it worthy. Um, what is your answer? In other words, how do you solve it? Without complaining. How do you solve racism or how do you solve? Yeah, how do you solve the whole thing that, that you've been talking about in the chat? Danger, Russ, just tell us real quick. Question, yeah. yeah, just so what what is your answer? What is your answer? Yeah, I just, you know, I just want to throw out to just, you know, people get this, this black and white idea that everything that happened in history, you know, like all the, you know, like the slavery thing we've been talking about, that it was all evil. But we don't see the whole situation. We don't see the good that was done of it. We don't see that division between good and evil. There were good people in th that situation. There were good people who were who wanted to do the right thing, who believed in the truth, and there were people who were evil. And we just don't see that anymore. We see it all just kind of, this was a bad time. And so that's how we can sort of, that's how the narrative is twisted. Uh, in a way, and we don't actually get to the root cause of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love I love how he keeps talking about about God. If he understands. Christianity and the theology of Christianity, we are all fallen from the grace of God. We are all dead in our sins. And you talk about, is God going to walk people, the slave traders into heaven? No, we don't earn our way into heaven. 
It's only through uh, the spilled blood of Christ because John 14, 6, Christ himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. But this is not, I mean, we're, this is not a theological talk, but get it off my chest. That's an interesting thing. You want to bring God into it. We're all, none of us are good. None of us make it. None. Mm -hmm. Not a single one. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't remember, I don't recall anything in the Bible that says, you know, no slavery. No. Well, there was two kinds of slavery in the Bible. There was yeah. the ones that was, there was the ones where you know the nations were captured, the Jews were were held in slavery with Babylon. You had you had the slaves like the the Jews with the with the Egyptians. So there was there was forced slavery and bondage, and then there was indentured servitude. And you had a master, and you worked for that person. So, and and when the Bible says treat your slaves well, and as a, if you're a slave, honor your master. That was the the honorable kind of slavery but slavery is not the good it's not the good term because when you use that term we're going back to this you know 17th century 18th century uh 19th century kind of slavery and that's not how it was then there was there was those two kinds right how can anybody know who god will or won't walk into heaven Jesus is powerful and merciful, so save anybody. Yeah, well, you, you got to understand the thing about, about that comment. You're right. But we don't know a person's heart. We, we, can, we can have an idea of a person's heart by what they say and how they act, right? Um, it's like what Christ told uh, the Pharisees. It's not what you put in your mouth that, 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 that dirties you. It's what comes out of your mouth, right? You're whitewashed tombs. You know, you're all clean on the outside and dead on the inside. So, uh, yeah, he couldn't save anybody, but the Bible does talk about sheep and lambs too, you know, and this is, gets into a very deep theology here, but there's only one way to heaven and it's not through us. That's for sure. Yeah. And I, one thing that, you know, Russ seems to bring up quite a bit is, you know, like excusing like things of the past. Well, you know, the, the first thing is that I, I don't think any of us here on this panel are responsible for, you know, the, the slavery of the past, or the founding, you know, of America, or any of that, um, and so I don't understand what there is to excuse. It's not like we're excusing. It's not like we have, you know, slaves. It's not like it's not, like I don't understand. Like what is what 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 is there to excuse? It sounds like you just want money. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny? I like this talk, and maybe we should do a maybe we should do a, a Saturday night uh, theological talk. You know, he says here, so Christ will forgive well, the left and feminine. Yeah, he the, will. This is the problem: is that you, if you're gonna, you can't cross over. It's the hard time is crossing over from theological talk into rational talk into racism. Those yeah. three don't mix. They don't mix. They just don't. You're not going to come with come up with a conclusion. And that's the reality. If you're going to talk about theology and Christianity, there's your answer, period. That's your answer. But when you reach now into, into in other words, go down a whole completely different rabbit hole, then that's the issue is that you're never going to solve the issue if somebody's always crying that you know woe is me kind of thing so we all we all got to answer for ourselves we all got to work hard for ourselves everybody's got it that, that's the thing you know we get to the point where it's it's the individual too uh -huh. i mean that's that's the real point uh -huh. you know if you're if we're going to talk as a christian then we all need to unite as a christian but you can't you can't make your own points as far as as far as how you believe you're going to get into heaven. For all we know, you know, I said, you know, I, I, I've said this before. How many religions are there? Let's think about many. it. Okay. Many, many. Okay. Somebody's going to be very disappointed when they die. Let's put it that <laughs> way. A lot of people. <laughs> Has anybody thought about that? You know, I mean, you never know. I might have 72 virgins waiting for me. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, I'm not sure if it's 72 or 27. 
but uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So when we um, when we go down this road, um, it just doesn't sound like. I mean, we're not going to solve anything going this path. The only thing we can do is give our give our point of view and try to talk rationally about. You know, again, if I say say to people that I don't believe in racism, I don't I don't see color until it's mentioned to me. Then you can say you can call me this or call me that, but that's the way I feel. I believe in good and evil. Yeah, I hear you, Tony. I, I kind of feel the same way. Like I look at hard workers and I look at lazy people. I look at people who are thinkers and people who are just like, well, you know. But race race is never really an issue in my my book either. You know, I, I live in Brazil. There's all mixed races here. I treat everybody the same, you know. You, you, it's called common courtesy. Like respect is something you have to earn from me. I'm not just going to respect you because of who you are, but I will treat you decently. Like I don't give my respect for free, but I'm not going to treat you bad. I treat everybody decent. So there's a thing called common courtesy, but I'm with you. Exactly. What race has fought in every major conflict? I'll answer this question. The human race. <laughs> the human race. <laughs> the human race. Every major conflict. Yeah, I mean. Again, I didn't make it about color, Russ. You did. So, I just. Uh, I hope he's not trolling us, but um, you know. Yeah, I mean, somewhere, some place in the world, somebody has been oppressed. Let's say, you know, nobody, no, no, nobody's innocent of it in the sense of like no, no. Uh, group of people no culture no land is has been innocent of anything that's true we could go on infinitely talking mm -hmm. about who oppressed who and it and it wasn't just one color you know against the other the same way every single time it happens happened every single way for reasons unrelated to race as well as related you know it, there's you know there's been wars over like look at like ireland scotland all that stuff they have a rich history of war and things like that. Oppression. Yeah. All right, guys. I think this is a good note to cash out. I'm getting super tired and I'm beat. tired. I get angry. I get angry. And when I get hungry and angry, I get angry. Fired up. I'm like ready to start my day. <laughs> Bring it on. Let's see. Yeah. Right, and everyone loves William Wallace. Oh boy! And William Wilberforce, he's the one that kind of led the uh, he led the, the freedom of slavery in England. But I don't think many people, especially in America, know about that. William Wilberforce. No, yeah, William Wilberforce. That was his name. We got a great one from uh, Peg. Says, "Change your clocks." That's right, because it's Not actually. Uh, Two o'clock now, not one o'clock here where I am. Not wow. where I live. Whoa. I don't change my clocks. I'm so close to the equator. It's the same all year round. Right. Is it daylight <laughs> savings? Is daylight savings tonight? It oh, is. I'm nice. Gonna be, I'm going to be screwed up. Yeah. I'm already screwed up, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually two o'clock for me. So we're going to wrap it. Anyways, guys, um, anybody you can find me. You can reach out to me. If you want to reach out to me on a private message, you can find me on Instagram, T21Surfer. That's on Instagram or Twitter at T21Surfer. You can find all my podcasts with all sorts of black and white people, um, dating coaches and lifestyle coaches um, of all different colors and races. Um, but you can find that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, all that. So go ahead and like, subscribe, share. Um, like Jesse says, ring the bell, you know, get the notification bell and everybody is welcome back. I want to recognize everybody in the chat. Danger Russ, we appreciate your input. Vlad Dracula, of course, he's returning here all the time. Good to see you. 30 day reviews. Of course, Anthony Velasquez, Rick Simpson, oil RSO. Appreciate your comments. I'm not sure if I missed anybody, but uh, let me see here real quick. I think that's everybody here in the late night after hours, but I appreciate everybody coming in. And um, again, anybody wants to reach out to me in a private message, 
Okay, direct message, Instagram, T21Surfer. That's T21Surfer. Instagram or Twitter. So that's how you can reach out to me. If you want to donate to this channel, um, Russ, if you want to donate to my channel, you can go to snug.me. It's in the description of this video. Um, and just drop a few bucks in there. We'll call buy, tacti it. buy tactical soap. Yep. You want to buy some tactical soap, track the ladies. That's what you can do. So it's right up here in the corner, right next to Mr. Finn. Order, order your tactical soap. Pheromone infused soap. The, look at That's it. Yeah. Beautiful. Link is in the description of this video. So, but I appreciate everybody and I do appreciate. Yep. That's Rick. That's T21 Surfer. Just T21 Surfer on Instagram or Twitter. That's my Instagram and Twitter. So you can also find me on Gab on Tony Bruno T21 Surfer. So Mr. Finn, how can everybody find you? Uh, English with Mr. Finn, both Instagram and YouTube. I do have Facebook, but I don't, I'm not really active there. And I'm there to just help people be better communicators in the English language. Uh, my, my first focus aim was English learners and English teachers, but I'm expanding that to even native speakers just to help anyone and everyone to be a better communicator in the English language because words mean something and let's choose the appropriate word in the appropriate setting to get your message across. So I'm always trying to do my best to make you better. So check me out whenever you can drop a message. I'm there to talk. I do like theology, but that's not my game. My game is English communication, but Hey, I'm here to talk. Okay. Also, too, I just wanted to let everybody know. I mean, I've had the the live link is is I now pin it to the top of the chat. So anybody is able to jump on this chat, you can jump on live and talk with us. Okay. There's a few people I allow on without without an avatar. That's Speeder. That's JC. These guys are recognized. So um, I do I do you know they've been on before, so they're not trolls. So I do allow some people on. Once you've been, we'll call it Tony Bruno verified, you are allowed to come on with an avatar. But uh, no more non-avatars unless you've been verified by me. So, um, but I, I, I've got a couple people. Donnie, thank you for, for spending time with us. Vigo, next live stream is on Thursday. We do Thursday nights. Okay, that's a lot of times we have a special guest. And I want to thank Jack Donovan for jumping in tonight. Man. That, that was, was a, awesome. That was an awesome special. Oh, that was nice. You know, so. Um, that made my day, Tony, because I really, I just, I yeah. couldn't wait for the day I could meet him, you know. I, I've, I've, I've communicated with him on Insta, you know, and uh, that was awesome. I really appreciated that. I didn't want to be like fanboy, but I, I really did appreciate that. <laughs> not that he's not here, and I don't think he's watching, but yeah, I was kind of like fanboy. I was like, oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. Good. So again, anybody can jump on. You can jump on the live panel. So um, what did he say? Yeah, I read his book, The Way of Men. Good, good, good. But uh, Gonzo, how can everybody find you? Oh yeah, um, you can uh, you can check out my YouTube channel. It's Gonzo School. That's where I have my hot takes and you know where we talk about kind of stuff that the kind of things that we talk about on this show. You know, I talk about uh, hot takes and news and that sort of thing. Uh, and then I'm I'm on Instagram at Midnight Author, where you can check out my art and stuff. And you can check out the Lurking Press. This is the new shop that I just opened up and we've got Excellent. some some booklets and uh some you know this is a short story that i just uh, uh published on there and i'm gonna have some more stuff so it should be fun um yeah and that's basically it and midnight author on gab and everybody knows too i have the links to everybody's youtube is already in the description of the video pretty sure mr finn is down there already um let me just check just for the heck of it but i think everybody is already in there yeah i'm there Yep, everybody's there. So that's how you can find everybody's YouTube. Speeders, do you want people to find you or no? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I I upload uh, some videos I think are uh, special. And you can find me by uh, uh, that link. I think I can post it. Yeah, there there it goes. So okay. there's my channel link. Oh, did you put it in the public chat? or? No, he did in the private. I, I, I did uh, both. And maybe it didn't work on uh, YouTube, but uh, yeah, you have it here. It should come up on YouTube. I don't it see it. It may take a second for it to show up. 
on the StreamYard thing for us? I think uh, yeah. links might be uh, uh, the disabled when it comes to that. Yeah, why don't you do this? I why got it. Did you get I, it? I, mm -hmm. I'm, I got it. I don't. I don't have it in my chat. I don't know why. Oh, I, I can try. I can try reposting it if necessary. Yeah, you're you're a mod, so you can do I that. Let me. Now I gotta track it down real quick here. Cool. So we're gonna end this broadcast again. If any of you guys want to donate to my channel, when I say donate, you can donate cash if you want to. Uh, to meet with me. I also have a link in there at Snug. You can donate there, but you can also book time with me if you want to talk about something. I'm available for that. So just letting you guys know. If you want to reach out to me, again, direct messaging. You don't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. okay? But Twitter, Instagram, T21 Surfer. And you can reach out to anybody on this panel. I'm sure we'll gladly speak to anybody, that's for sure. So, but. Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up the broadcast. Appreciate everybody. It's been been pretty consistent all night long. So I do appreciate everybody that's in here and everybody else that was on the panel tonight. But uh, you can find everybody in the description of this video. So, but uh, the four guys on now. If you want to stay on for a quick after party, I'm gonna end the broadcast. Cheers, everybody. Much love, honor. Bye.